Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! I learned a long time ago that there's no sense getting all riled up every time a bunch of idiots give you a hard time. In the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Plus, I have a really large penis. That keeps me happy. You look goofy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Very uneventful hump day today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I think some more people need nooners out there, to be honest with you. What do you say? Yeah, they might chill out. Yeah. It's very relaxing. If there was a, a few more nooners <laughs> and a little less drama. Oh, my God. It the, should be done more than once a week. The world will be a better place. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nerd Rodic Nooner. Lots of bickering and stuff going on out there. And uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but not very much because uh, whatever. But um, I thought uh, the podcast of the Lotus Eaters did a pretty good video on it today. Who? What? Uh, oh. Podcast of the Lo Lotus Eaters. Just kind of went over it. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. But uh, hey, my name is Gary Beekler. I come to you from Nerdrotic. This is the Nerdrotic Nooner. Uh, Disney bent the knee today. Disney bent the knee. They settled their lawsuit with uh, little Ronnie D and his pumps. And uh, Ronnie D won. Kind of. A little bit. Yeah. So, And it was the smartest thing uh, for Disney to do. And believe me, not a lawyer, not a financial analyst. Go to Legal Mindset. He... He's been on top of this from the beginning and absolutely right about the whole thing because he's actually done some Florida law in the past on, on that very subject. Uh, me, a little adverse to lawyers just for obvious cool. reasons. Uh, for summer. What's that? Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. Oh. No, I'm looking up podcast of the Lotus Eaters. Oh, yeah. When I put ah. it in my watch history. In your watch history. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good one today. So, uh, uh, yeah, but um, – We'll discuss that, and we'll talk about it, it's. I, I was on Pierce Pierce Morgan yesterday, and I think the video is going to be out uh, next week, right? So I thought it would be out like last night or something like that, but they said it's going to be out next week, early next week. So keep an eye out for it. I'm with Critical Drinker, and um, 
Esther, Esther, Esther. I don't know. Esta? Is it Esta? Yes. Esta. Esther? That's how you say it. Esta. Wait. And so are you like a regular now? I don't here? know. I don't know. That's cool. You're recurring. Day. Okay. And being invited back is huge. It was pretty being cool. Invited. And uh, some limp-wristed author. Talk about drama, which, shall we? Let's have some drama. Oh, my Sorry. God, Chris. What is that? Chris. <laughs> what the fuck? It, it's like I've never done a podcast before. I know, dude. Mix minus, <laughs> mix minus on your soundboard. It will separate the audio coming through your mic <laughs> and your your desktop. How do I do that? I don't know. Chris has me? officially become a boomer. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome to the club. Oh, my God. Uh, so where was I? Oh yeah. So I was on peers and with some limp wristed author who was saying like the culture war doesn't exist, which is, this is like the second guest. He had a guest on last time I was on, who was on before I came on, who was saying the same shit. So that's like the new narrative. So we're going to discuss that. We're going to discuss mm. that a little bit and then you'll see, uh, what the guy says like next week uh, on the video. It's pretty weak. Didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, but that's not unusual, not unusual, but, um, yeah, and uh, got a shout out from Joe Rogan or, or from uh, from Kurt Metzger on Joe Rogan. So okay, let me correct that. Hail Kurt. That's Metzger. huge. Yeah, dude, that's huge. Cheers, buddy. I, I keep saying at some point you need to be on Rogan. I agree. You're, you need to be on Rogan. I would wait until certain projects emerge. But you, dude, you got to do it. I'd it's, love to discuss uh, sobriety with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. while he's I uh potentially i think that'd be fun i think it'd be yeah. an interesting topic uh, that's uh and other things ancient civilizations that'd be fun i'd be oh, awesome love but that. thanks to all you guys by the way for your support and this is it's weird that it's happening but i appreciate everybody out there in the fellowship and uh yeah the new narrative is the culture war doesn't exist there's nothing wrong people still want diversity now it's just sequels and da, da 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 and yeah no no the basis of this problem is dei that is the foundation of this entire problem it's got other problems too chris has gone over this ad infinitum for years corporatism we'll get into all of it hello chris gore how the hell are you i'm doing great man uh so happy to be here always love watching uh real bbc such a great conversation just it's like i'm hanging out with you but you can't hear me but I do DM you. Uh, you do. Sometimes. And it's much. awesome. You're like a Too producer. Much. No, you're like, it's awesome. Dude. Oh, dude. You gave me the article that and told me you said, make a video on this. And it's my most watched video. Oh, okay. And I've got, mm. I've got, I found another website. I'm going to, I'm going to go find it right now. Cause I have to, I'm, I, hopefully there's no sound on it, but no, uh, uh, doing great. I, I, I avoid, by the way, all this drama that's happening. I saw, Quarter Black Garrett put something out. I'm like, I don't know. What is this about? Whatever. His, his last one was just uh, a, a, a guy eating popcorn. So I think right. that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, look, I only know what I see and I kind of judge. I, I got to judge based on what, what yeah. the, the information is available to exactly. me. And, but I avoid drama like the plague. If there's any, like, uh, I just, I just, I don't like it. I tend to ignore it. I have to have it explained to me. Usually I watch like Chrissy Mayer weeks later, we'll do a video. And she like explains and I'm just like, and even after I'm done watching the 20 minute video, I'm like, I don't care about any of this. I don't care. I just don't. So it's counterintuitive, especially what we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah. We'll get into it. Like, let's let's say, uh, yeah. Because I mean, it's just, I mean, the, the easiest answer, Chris, it's mm. human behavior. There's no way to avoid it. This is going to happen, right. but there are ways to get out in front of this stuff and keep it from happening, happening basically by treating people well, that would be yeah. That would be my solution: <laughs> treating people well, <laughs> communication. Okay. Yeah. Hello. I gotta work on that. <laughs> people. X-ray. Goo. I did that Hello. half English. Sorry. Gary, I know. I think that would technically be a racist. You didn't do it fully. I, I, I did a racist. Hit the gong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we found uh, Asian drunk 3PO. I thought that was an interesting tweet. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it actually really does look like him. I saw that one. Is it the Amazon delivery yeah, one? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is Asian drunk 3PO. Oh, my God. And he's trying to save you money 
by not subbing to Prime. How Asian of him. What do you think of that, Jay? (laughs) (laughs) Out. Dude, that looks like you, bro. What do you think? Oh, my God. Anything? He's probably like, he's just as he's me. No, it's it's taking him this long to read the the headline. (laughs) He's reading the chat. He's reading the chat. Nah. (laughs) But I, so I just said, um, Asian J or is it Perry Chan? But anyways, (laughs) I digress. Um, Can't tell the difference. I've I've had a great morning so far. Uh, I'm excited to talk about, uh, well, stuff. Maybe not the drama, but I guess it's a part of being on here. And then, uh, yeah. I'd certainly, uh, the topic of conversation in certain areas, if you're not on Twitter, you wouldn't know what the fuck's going on, to be honest with you. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. You're so yeah. much smarter than all of us. Uh, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's, well, there's, there's, it really kicked off with um, Matt Walsh saying basically he's the first uh, the, to really bring attention to the, the whole gamer issue and uh, them politicizing and prop, uh, propagandizing our stuff. Um, whether he meant to say that or not, it doesn't matter. Pissed off a lot of gamers. Uh, then there's the, uh, dude, I don't even want to get involved in the uh, Crisis King thing. Don't, whatever. I mean, I don't that, even know what that is. I, I tried to read into it. And I just stopped caring about five minutes in. I'm like, I don't care. Um, and then, you know, uh, not gay Jared comes out, does a video on Crowder. Uh, and apparently it's breaking an NDA. And then, Crowder show went out and did a response and Crowder wasn't there with Gerald and uh it's just uh it's a clusterfuck right now. <laughs> Tim Pool's making Why videos, everybody's taking like sides and uh it's like you know this is like the worst year to do this, right guys? Just can I can I state yeah. the obvious? This is the fucking worst year to do this, to start imploding. Um but I mean this happens and I guess it just happened all at once. And uh, th- there's not a way to avoid that. NDAs are a thing. I don't have any. Maybe I'm dumb, but I don't have any. Uh, and uh, all my deals are handshakes. Uh, but I'm not a big. I'm not a-, a big political thing, right? And I understand why you need them there because they're. It- it's a totally dis- different sphere, and you have other political operatives trying to completely take you out. So, like I absolutely get why you get lawyers and ndas involved you have to you have to so i understand that but uh wow it just went all public and i would just say like you know divorces suck divorces suck i've been through a divorce and uh and you wouldn't want that just being public at all like none of it either side i don't think either side looks good in the end and it just whatever try to keep that stuff private don't know what else is going on besides that uh other than Core blacks eating popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> I feel mostly bad for the kid because when you Google someone's name, stuff like this might show up and it's like, oh, yeah. I don't that. There's I there's that too. There's kids involved, but we don't, mm-hmm. I, obviously, we don't know what happened. But just acknowledging it's there. Uh, and uh, Chris is right. It's, it's, whew, this is so none of my business, none of anybody's yeah. business. It's like thrown in my face. Like, I don't want to, I really, don't want to hear about somebody's like divorce court papers like ever. Yeah, I, and I never feel I never feel better knowing all this personal information about people, no. some of which I know and some I don't know. And I'm just like, I don't I and I will just don't want to know. I'd rather just be blissfully ignorant about all of it. So yeah, yeah. Um, but I, we I don't wonder need to know I about everything. Direct. We don't no. like, what's that? We don't need to know about everything. I just really yeah, don't. Yeah, we don't need to know. Or even better, here's a ba- I'll go I don't know, better. need to know who you sleep with. I don't need to know how you identify. I don't need to know <laughs> any of that shit. <laughs> I'll go you one better. I, look, not only do I not need to know, I just, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect the people that are sort of hovering around. Just, I, I don't know. I just, well. I'm looking up Garrett's because I got to ask if he's eating popcorn out of his Dune popcorn bucket. That's going to. Oh, he should have. Oh, he yeah. that comment. He's doing his nooner and eating popcorn. What? Yeah. Yeah. Probably getting ready. for. There it. you go. There you go. Oh, my God. Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> he's, just... getting, he's getting ready for normal world. Probably. That would. Yeah, that for sure. I guess <laughs> that would be my guess. Um, And go check out normal world on blaze and out here on YouTube. Good show. Yeah. Dave Landau and quarterback Garrett. Uh, so. 
is there if you could find an article uh, uh i i'm not going to get into the ins and outs because i just don't know and i don't really care but i know reedy creek is a property that disney had uh and in, in florida correct me if i'm wrong chat but uh basically disney and their properties, they could lord over them. They had a bunch of tax breaks. They had these insane deals that uh, that Walt worked out with the state of Florida. They're basically their own sovereign nation, you know, uh, own fire department. They have their own, like, little police department. Like, a lot of weird things. Um, uh, I do believe there is a – it's not a jail, but it's a place where you could lock people up. Uh, they, they certainly have that in Disneyland, too, by the way. Um, uh, but uh, – Reedy Creek is another property that they had some deal with. Whatever. Um, then they decided, Disney decided to get into a political debate that Bob Iger to this day doesn't think is a political debate. Uh, that t- political debate, they tried to call it the don't say gay bill. What it actually was, was uh, for some reason, there's a lot of kindergarten teachers and first grade teachers who want to teach sexual things to your kids. Gay, straight, whatever. Totally against it. Uh, we we have an education problem already in this country. Kids can't fucking do math. Kids can't read. Uh, kids don't know their history. And we want to teach them that first? No. No. It's just fucking stupid. And it's common sense, right? So Disney decided to wade into that and say it's not political. It's right and wrong. Uh, Disney may be forgetting they're a family brand. And a lot of moms and dads take little Bobby and little Susan uh, to fucking Disneyland and uh, they don't want little Susan uh, to go pick out her princess gown with some dude with like a beard fucking fuller than mine dressed as a princess. It's really common sense shit. But the, Disney decided to wade into this. And uh, they've got the proxy battle coming up. It all looked bad. And as Legal Mindset has been saying, the only way out of this is to settle. And that's what they did. But they basically bent the knee. Uh, so... Disney reaches settlement in Florida lawsuit over theme park district. And I I don't know what the settlement is. I don't care. Um, I like to see Disney get their comeuppance and they should have to pay. The taxation is theft. All of it fucking is theft. Okay. But they should have to pay what Universal pays, what everybody else pays. They shouldn't get any special breaks for being Disney anymore, especially when they aren't Disney anymore. You know, Walt would be fucking pissed about all this. All this. Walt, Walt is spinning. His headless body is spinning in his grave, and his frozen head is spinning in its container. Uh, Disney has reached a truce in its fight with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over a special district that governs Walt Disney World. Uh, in a settlement agreement announced on Wednesday, Disney and Florida will drop the lawsuits, and they have filed against each other and negotiate new development agreements for the 40-square-mile uh, that encompasses the company's Orlando theme parks. And now, uh, is this a is this like a neighborhood where you can buy a house, right? You could buy a house, and it's like a Disney-run neighborhood or Disney-owned neighborhood. Uh, Jeff Vahal, president of Walt Disney World, said in the statement that the deal opens a new chapter of constructive engagement with the state government. We are pleased to put an end to the litigation. Uh, pending in state Florida between Disney and Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. The agreement opens a new chapter for a consecutive agreement, blah, 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 blah. I don't even, like, go to Legal Mindset. He'll break down, find out how di- much Disney got screwed or what. I I just get bored when it gets into the ins and outs. But uh, Disney, uh, Disney is uh, taking some losses over the last year, shall we say. And uh, over the last uh, 18 months, I believe, trying to go back to Avatar made money for him, even though it's Fox. That's a Disney movie. So Avatar did well. Guardians of the Galaxy uh, barely made money. Everything else basically flopped. Um, They have not had a successful Disney Plus TV show until possibly X-Men 97. And I don't know, like, how successful it is. I know it's not terrible. And they're heading into Inferno which is kind of insane. But um, but uh, they've taken a lot of losses. Bob Iger's had to call out all his fucking big guns for this proxy battle, which I still think he's going to win. I still think he's going to win. I yeah. just I, I mean, could, with George Lucas, how many shares does George Lucas have? I'll oh, bet it's significant. Uh, single, uh, as far as, like, individual shareholder, he's the biggest. Yeah. So, I mean, 
it's, I mean, it's rigged, but it's, you know, <laughs> especially with that video that they made. Dude, that video is horrible, but it's like yeah. one of two that they made were horrible and, and they don't even care. And somebody sent me uh, their, their, their white card and it's all pre-filled out. I guess you can do that. Uh, don't, don't exactly know how you're a shareholder if your shit's pre-filled out and you're just letting people fill out. I, I think it's insane to uh, put your retirement money into a can. I'm not a financial analyst. And let some guy just pick all these stocks for you. I just think yeah. that's fucking insane. I, I, I want absolute control over all my money. Unless it's like, God dang, a really close family member, not even just a peripherally close family member, a really close family member who I've known for decades, who I knew wouldn't like steal my money. Uh, just, just saying, in the past, I won't say I, I won't get into details on this, but uh, from both my wife's business and my business, people have embezzled from us in the past. God. So I know what that feeling is, and it's fucking awful. I, I have been, I've never had anything like that happen to me, but I have been taken advantage of like by people that just like, Hey, can you do, I I'm like, Oh, this is my friend. And then I realized they're not my friend. They just want something. And that, that it really hasn't happened a lot to me lately, but it used to happen back in the day. Yeah. Kind of sucks. It sucks. I mean, it's not know. like I, I, in either time, it wasn't like this massively huge amount of money. Right. But it was still right. the, the fact that it happened and you're like, fuck, God dang it. You know? Yeah. That feeling of being betrayed. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. But, uh, water under the bridge for me, it's gone. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it really is indicative of like, uh, the, like, the failure that Disney has continued to do, and, and like this is why I want Bob Iger to get everything he wants. I fucking hope he wins. I do. I generally hope he wins. I don't. Nelson Peltz come out and said he doesn't want to fire Bob Iger. Well, fuck. Well, then why are you there, dude? You think you're right. going to change it? He wants to just replace the board and then what? Force Bob Iger to do stuff he doesn't want to do. Uh, I mean, th the best case scenario is he gets those board seats and he fucks with everything, and it just stops Disney from being stupid for a little while. But not forever. Like Bob Iger, and and maybe I don't know how it, they pick a successor. I I don't really fucking care. Disney is too far gone. Like for, for yes. anybody, no, that, go yeah, on. too far gone. It's 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 you built a community. You built like you know a type of people that are at the company that's not going away. You would have to do an Elon Musk like purge and get rid of two thirds of everyone. Maybe rehire people back, but there's no way. There's, it's going to have to either, it's going to have to collapse to change the culture. You know, they talk about a work culture um, that, that that's at Disney for sure. And it's changed um, while you're uh, chatting uh, with all this, I'm listening and I'm reminded of a video. I put it in the private chat. Uh, have you heard of this thing called Disney story living? No. It's, it, oh my God. I put the, you got to use this for an upcoming video of yours, Gary. It's a, community like one of those gated communities but it's run by disney dude it is like you're watching it and if you put different music underneath it it seems like a horror film i put the link to the youtube videos <laughs> in there. it's from a couple years ago but it's like a community you can like buy or, or rent like a space in and it's called disney i think it's called disney story living check out the video i put in the private chat but don't like me have it where it goes through the board can you, you hear the can you play it can we share it I mean, I'll watch it uh, afterwards. Otherwise, if you want me to, I mean, I don't know. Like, that's it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Story uh, living by <laughs> Disney. It's new business to develop residential communities. And it's, this was put out by Disney parks. When you watch this video. So for those listening at home, there's a, the first comment is black mirror would have a field day with this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Gary, I saw this video a couple of years ago and I remember thinking this is the creepiest thing I've ever seen because it's like, imagine like you love, and there are people that are like this. They're always um, dinks. They're like, you know, dual it, income, it's, no it's, kids. Dual income, no yeah. kids. Yes. It's always those adult Disney fans that have no children. So why are they constantly at Disney? Those kind of people after a while, they're a little creepy. 
Um, but like, it's like they want to just, they can't just experience Disneyland, Disneyland. They want Disneyland to run their lives. When you watch this video, you got, I don't know if you probably don't want to watch it now. It's like five minutes, but you're going to be able to use footage from this in future videos. Um, so it's, it, it just, where it, is it? It looks like it's a, it's a community development where hey, I'm going to click on this link. I'll check it out. Yeah. yeah where, like, where is it? Cause that didn't look like Florida. <clears throat> so is that in uh, Dubai? Like is it in more. fucking Nevada? Uh, Arizona? Where was that? Uh, this is, this is a corporation running your life. This is, you buy yeah. into this community. You buy. And so you buy into it. Do you own that? Like, but even if you own the house, they own the price. That's weird. Yeah. No, no. Hey, you got to watch this. Video you want to have a crazy kid. room filled with toys. Cool. If I, like, I'd love to have like, <clears throat> like Bilbo's sitting room or something. As my living room. Right. Fucking what? Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I don't want to like live 24 7 in Disney. Oh my <laughs> God. That would be the a great Twilight Zone. Uh, a fantastic Twilight Zone. Oh, and they kind of yeah. segregate you a little inside each of the residences too, because there's a 55 plus, there's Disney yeah. class members training. There's probably some tier where you pay more. So it's, uh, right. it's, it's, you know, the real rich people are going to be separated from. The, the lesser rich people like fuck that <laughs> i'm telling you this video it all i just got the creepiest vibes from it it it, it just feel that's why that top comment about black mirror is completely dead on it's in coachella valley yeah <laughs> really it's in coachella valley so it's right near coachella wow oh it's wow. a rancho mirage so it's near <laughs> palm springs yeah that's i i love Thanks. palm springs by the way Freaking, it's dope there. It's a lot of old people, a few gay people, really fucking clean. It's really some of the cleanest streets you will ever see in America. It's like a really chill place to go. I'll bet the people there Food's are pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, most people there are pretty based. Uh, most people there are pretty based. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Disney's creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's just this community. I just got... <laughs> Like, it just looks like a horror film to me. It does. Speaking of that, I saw, have you heard of this thing? Okay, just a quick thing, um, maybe a preview of film threat stuff. But, like, I just saw Winnie the Pooh um, Blood and Honey Part 2. It's actually really good. What? It's weird. It's a dumb horror movie. We're like, you know, all these properties, you know, Winnie the Pooh was written by A.A. A. Milne. It's now, like, public domain. And someone made a horror movie last year. Was, I mean, it was not very good. Uh who blood and honey was the first one. The second one is actually really good. They put their, their it, it just in terms so of they put an effort film. into it. Like this that? Time, they put some effort into it this time. They put effort into it. Okay. But literally they had, they're, they're all just serial killers. Like there's Tigger, there's owl, there's poo, there's piglet. It's the weirdest, grossest thing. So the preview before, so it's one of those fathom events, right? So um, it's not on a list. You go in and they played like this 10 minute preview of, they're going to do a part three. They're doing Bambi, the reckoning. And then they're doing a movie called the Pooniverse. They're doing a Pinocchio <laughs> movie. And the Excuse Pooniverse me? is no, I'm not just, uh, you can look it up. They're doing oh, all the of verse? these. The Pooniverse is all of the fairy tale characters in a massive horror movie. And it's coming out in 2025. It was in variety. So, um, I thought it was hilarious. It's they're just leaning into it. It's as a horror film. It's really fun. There's this scene where they go to a rave and kill a bunch of people. There's like, I interviewed the filmmakers. There's like 70 kills in the movie. If you're a horror fan, that means something right. Checklist of kills and creative kills. So I thought they did a great job. They can't, obviously they can't have a pantsless poo. It's gotta be off model, but it's Winnie the Pooh. And it's like Christopher Robin's grown up. And he basically yeah, you can just like, make his pants the same color as his legs, right? Just yeah, maybe exactly. a little little darker or something. Yeah. <laughs> you could kind of I they they danced up right to the line Dude. of the Disney models, but uh, I, I interviewed the filmmakers are just like F it, we're just doing this. They're just cashing in on it. And it's funny. The other thing I put in the chat, um, I want to talk. Well, might as well. We're doing a show. I'll talk to you live. I'll talk to you live. Yeah. I found a website that is a gold mine of everything horrible happening in Hollywood. Oh, let's let's take a look at it. It's in the private chat. I I highlighted one story, but this website is a community where you report things 
that are happening in the industry. Oh, um, is, is, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Have you seen this, Gary? No. So, so report things like, hey, this is what I'm seeing and I'm being anonymous. Yes. Okay. And yes. Not, okay. Not reporting people being a snitch. No, not reporting no, people. This is, it's, this is the things I'm seeing and being anonymous. Okay. Yes. It's all the like racism, gender bias stuff, um, sexual misconduct, conflicts of interest, nepotism stuff. And it goes through, if you click on the other link, I specifically, they just talk about all the, like how they pushed out like white male directors. The, the other link. Uh, is it the, there. the second link? Second link. Yeah. The second link. Check second that link. out. But like Gary, this is your new gold mine when you do videos because it's the community reporting, but with receipts. So you'll see screenshots of programs, screenshots from newsletters. This is all people within the industry that see all the BS stuff that's going on. And they're just sending it to this website. I mean, it's not like a particularly complex site. They're just, doesn't need all they're to doing be. is just, what's that? It doesn't, doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. Yeah. Yeah. All they're doing is saying, here's stuff that's going on. Here's stuff that's happening in the industry. Like if you scroll down, there's a whole thing about, um, white male directors just being like, just, we don't need you. And it's all, it, yeah. You're right there. The quote right here. If you read that or. All right. Uh, yeah. For the past five years, white straight male writers and directors with experience and successful track records have been sidelined. We've essentially been told that because of our race and gender, we do not, uh, we not, do not need apply. Do not need to apply. Uh, this may be obvious at first glance. Uh, there sure seem to be a lot of white dudes at the Golden Globes, right? Well, this doesn't impact the top 2% of the writers, showrunners, and directors since they're in the uh, rarefied air where they get work no matter what. And the saddest part of this is that most of the people who would fill that room are some of the most liberal people I know. People who have gone out of their way to foster new and unique voices. And oh, that's... By the way, that's a quote from Film Threat. Yes, it is. <laughs> they, so they quoted us uh, from, but like this site, what they do is, is they grab receipts from email newsletters, programs that are starting. I mean, I get daily press releases from, we just started this. They always couch it in a way that's coded. Like we want to lift up emerging voices, but they never say no white people or no white men. They just say it's the emerging voices program and they show a picture and it's all, well, non-white people or it's all. Um, so uh, they go through that. This quotes some of us, but if you go back to the, to the homepage, it's just a, a, a nonstop barrage of stuff that's being sent to us. Um, this, this um, website is keeping track of it. So awesome. maybe. Bookmark that for future videos. Oh, You're going to be able to find definitely. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, no. Uh, and it's great that they're doing that. And it's great that this is happening, happening. It, it needed to happen at some point. Yep. But I'm looking at you, not you, Chris, or X-Ray yeah. Girl, or not even you, chat. I'm looking at you, Hollywood. Somebody who's got a name needs to fucking come out, get a sack of fucking balls and say something. Stop whispering to us. I understand your job is at risk. It's at risk anyway. You're not right. getting fucking jobs anymore. I mean, yeah. at this point, it's it. The Titanic is sunk, but like fucking come out and say something because nothing's gonna change. I was like, I really love what you're doing, dude, but I can't say anything. Then why are you working there? It sounds fucking terrible. Yeah, it sounds awful. Yeah, you know, I I I get it. Family don't want to rock the boat. I've been there in certain jobs, and then I realize, oh, I can just get another job if I have a skill. If I have a skill, I can get another job. And if you have, if you're really a good writer, if you're a good artist uh, of any kind, then you've got a skill that you can market yourself. And you might end up, you, you know what? Maybe it lowers the ceiling a little bit. Maybe you don't get millions upon millions, but you you can make a good living and be happy, and be happy, and no strings attached, no corporate bullshit, no HR. Just think about it. Just think about it. Jesus. It's I think freedom. Is, I've come to the conclusion I'll just never work for an organization that has more than say 50 employees because if you get north of that you you're going to have a, a human resources department although I do like that have you seen advertise Gary that they actually have you can have your HR department basically just be an app 
Like it's just an app that does everything an HR department would do. I mean, look, I know AI is going to replace a lot AI, of HR. Jobs. <laughs> yeah. AI. No, I'm serious. Oh, no. I'm serious. Look at it. it. It exists. Oh, I'm sure it does. I'll ask Shad. Yeah, like, <laughs> probably like, know. Ask, but no, for for real, like that's like a thing where just like ah, just get, you just get an app and it's like it just handles any personnel issues or whatever. I just think like I, I, look, I've had some very bad experiences with HR. Right. I like to joke around. I like to say some jokes. Maybe the jokes get misinterpreted or some people's feelings get hurt. Mm. Um, it happens when you're joking. It happens when you're in a creative space. You know, um, that's why I think uh, your HR officer, Ryan Kinnell, does a great he, job. He's the best. He's absolutely so good the best. It. He's so good. Uh, but like, yeah, I just I just learned like, no, I'm not doing it. And so I've been HR free for se going on seven years. HR free. So yeah, with your a, with your I, but I get what you're saying with your AI app, it's putting HR people out of out of work, and <laughs> I'm not against that. Maybe the DEI stuff too. I did a really interesting. This the is universe weird. tends to unfold as it should. Yeah, I did a really <laughs> interesting Twitter Spaces with this woman, Catherine Brodsky. I don't know if you know her. She's interviewed people like Elon Musk and whatnot. She has like sort of a free speech thing. She said, "Hey, would you talk about Hollywood?" So I was on for a couple hours. Clifton Duncan dropped in. Oh, that's there was awesome. This guy, it was it was really fun. Oh, in fact, I did. Where uh, is it? In, like, can we find it? Uh, if you go to my personal Twitter feed, that Chris Gore, you'll find it. Okay. But the interesting thing is a guy dropped in talking about AI. And he said he's seen the models. He said he has seen the models. And he said Hollywood is done. They're cooked. Like, once. Once this stuff gets like in the hands of creative people who know how to, which are going to be like into it, you're just good. He said, you're just going to be able to make full movies. I yeah. said, but I look, it was a really interesting debate. You can listen to it later. But my whole thing is that like, you know, to quote the scientist, Seth Brundle, everybody knows Seth Brundle, the scientist. Oh yeah. From totally. the movie, the fly played by. Oh um, yes. Jeff okay. Brundle. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Seth Brundle. Anyways, he's, you know, he said computers are dumb. They only know what you tell yeah, them. Yeah. 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 They're dumb. So you could input into an AI. Here's the scripts for back to the future one, two, and three, and it could mimic and sort of jumble up and write a script for back to the future four. But would it really be a good movie? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, so, we use, we use AI. Uh, AI is, artificial intelligence right but right you know i think a lot of people will conflate it with when it becomes intelligence when it comes right. actual intelligence uh but right now it's just a really super duper search engine that can uh you know the, and an aggregate right but i, I, th I like but, I, but i do think like an artist uh say a comic book artist will be able to right. you know hand draw his his models do turnarounds do some turnarounds mm -hmm. load it up there Hand draw some backgrounds once and load it up there and then be able to make their own comic with their art, you know, that that the the that the dumb computer learned from them drawing it. Uh I think yep. that's that's where it starts. Uh and then yeah, and then some kid who can't draw at all is gonna make a, a full on, you know, ten book fantasy series, you know, uh and, and that's just that's how it's gonna and people will read it. Pe like if it's good, people will read it. End of story. Doesn't matter really yeah. how it gets made at this point if it's good. Yeah, yeah. I still think you need a creative hand yes. guiding it. You can't like look, you know, if you put a brush in my hand, you're not going to get anything worth looking at in terms of art, right? You put a brush in the hand of an artist, that's something. You put Photoshop in front of someone who knows how to yeah. make art. And I say the same thing with AI, but AI, at least what I've seen of it is, it's kind of like a jumbler, right? Yeah. Like, and what I'm or maybe better described as a randomizer. So if you ever like played, um, well, maybe not you, Gary, but X-Ray Girl, <laughs> you play a game where you design your character in a video game and you can make the nose look like this and the eyebrows and hair color and this, or you could just be lazy and just click randomize and it just randomizes a character for you, right? And you just click the randomizer a couple of times. You're like, oh, I like that character. Now I can move on. But you could spend hours designing a character for certain games like cyberpunk or whatever. And, you know, that's cool. But I see AI as being kind of like a randomizer. I have all this data. Yeah. I'm going to randomize the data to make something new 
but I don't think that AI will be able to create anything original. That's where that's where humans come in. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just don't at least at least in the short term, I don't see that happening. But I've seen some experiments that'll blow your mind. This buddy of mine, Damon Packard, um, God, I'll, you know what? I'll find it to show it to you. Uh, just you can watch it later, whatever. He did this fake behind the scenes making of 1984's Dune with David Lynch. That is hilarious. Where Sean Young is drunk on the set, David Lynch is there. You see like weird Dune stuff. Just for your, I have a whole like um, playlist I created of just AI weird trailers, like Wes Anderson's Dune or Stanley Kubrick's Star Wars, and but they're just they're just sort of slightly moving images with music behind yeah. it. They're not trailers, and it's fine. Like as a visual thing, I think you could use it for like a lookbook or something. But um, to make an actual movie, I don't know. But Damon Packard, like he's a He's an underground indie filmmaker I've known for like, you know, 20, more than 20 years. Super weird dude, which is why his stuff is so good. I'll find that David Lynch thing. I don't know. I wouldn't play it. You'll get a copyright, whatever, because of the music, but I'll find it for you. But I, I'm fascinated with it because here's, here's my prediction on the AI stuff. That an independent filmmaker, someone with not a lot of money, who is a very good filmmaker in terms of st as, a, as a storyteller, is going to make, be able to make an independent film. We're talking about something made for not a lot of money, probably under 10 million. And it's going to look like a hundred or $300 million Hollywood movie. That That is the future. I think that in the yeah. next five years. So there could be a yeah. new George Lucas. I'm going to find that video. Well, there could be, and you won't have to rely on the corporations that have basically litigated AI out of that with the and the and the unions, which kind of ties the hands of artists at this point who do want to embrace it. By the way, they're all using it anyway. So, uh, Doctor Who just got busted using AI for a promo, and then they said they're promised they're never going to do it again. Um, I just watched the credits for. I was watching Silo. Uh, Mahler wanted to watch me. Wanted me to watch Silo. I'm like three episodes in. It's like really well made. It's just slow it's just fucking oh. slow it's just slow uh good performances it's fine it's just slow but their credits look ai they look like the ai credits from secret invasion yeah but you, you can tell because it looks like that it's surreal aggregate i guess you know well did you did you see the movie with david desmulchin um late night with the devil not yet I, it's I, it's in theaters it's it's i'm probably it's gonna so wait great. for it to come streaming no, it's, yeah 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 wait for vod but it's it's um it's like a dick cavett guy and it's like this sort of retelling of ho his halloween show that something happened on the show and it's never before been seen so it has this sort of blair witch project like you're seeing things like play out in real time or whatever that kind of and um so you see some behind the scenes stuff and i don't want to tell you what happens but apparently there's this little mini documentary that sets up the story and three of the images that are used in the mini documentary, only three used AI to create the images. And they're just fake like covers of time magazine or whatever, but people are coming after the movie for that. And I'm like, first of all, they did this before whatever the new rules are, but these guardrail rules are stupid. I feel like if it's a new tool, I don't know. Like I don't have a problem if you're hiring an artist to control it and create it. It's an artist using a new tool. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why it's, yeah. it's such a hey, huge remember, issue. Remember Blair Witch Project had a special, had like a little fake documentary. Yes. Yeah, remember that? That set up the movie, which you, yes. I mean, uh, you had to kind of see that first and it makes the movie a little better. But uh, yeah, I think that's cool that I, I don't care. I, I don't fucking yeah, care. I, I'm going to watch I, I it because I, I, it looks pretty cool. It's it cool. cool. It's a yeah. It's a it's a cool premise, and I think you'll dig it, and and you'll get the Dick um, Cavett vibes. So, the guy I can't even remember his name. He, Keep going. The the limp wristed guy I was uh, debating on. Uh, uh, we were debating on um, Piers Morgan yesterday. When you when you see it, has oh I didn't see it. I has, it's yet. not out yet. So, oh, okay. uh, but he's the one who claiming like uh, you know the, again the culture war doesn't exist. Uh, that's going to be, like I said, that's going to be their new narrative because I've heard this multiple times now that there is no culture war. This is all he used the word misinformation. He did say I was being misogynist uh, during something, too, which was you'll, oh you'll have to wait and see. But um, 
yeah, that's their new narrative that this culture war that that we we've gotten a few victories in all of a sudden is just it doesn't exist. Although they started their own little cultural revolution that led to this culture war that invaded every aspect of our fucking lives when we just wanted to enjoy a fucking movie or a video game. And uh, some of us just started, a lot of us started pointing this out, you know, years ago. And now we've gotten a couple of wins. And all of a sudden, nope, nope, it's just misinformation. People still want this stuff. So uh, they're going to, they're, they're not going to break from their narrative if we ever. If we ever believe that like Disney's gonna come out and admit any wrongdoing, never gonna fucking happen. No, nobody's gonna do it. Nobody's gonna come out and say, you know what? Kind of went a little too far. We fucked up. We're gonna try to make things better. You know what? If they did do that, a lot of people would forgive them and it would kind of kind of mend a lot of fences, but they never will. So uh here is uh current ratio. And, and again, we're winning. By just pointing out how much they're fucking up and they can't hide it. They've fucked up so much now that they can't hide it anymore. So here's the, the Acolyte trailer. You know, it, and uh, this really, oh. the, the ratio in the Acolyte trailer is unfucking believable. Well, did you hear G&G Daily this morning? They were going through the dislikes of all the star, major Star Wars trailers. Yeah, they, you know, ta they talked about- Last Jedi, um, Rise of Skywalker, Obi-Wan, like all the, and like what the dislikes were. And they were, there were dislikes, you know, they were like, but like considering- Little Mermaid views, was at 2.3 million. Yeah. 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 This is This crazy. is catastrophic though. This is fucking catastrophic, especially when- there's embedded shit going on right now. We, you don't need to pull it up, X-Ray Girl, but uh, Disney Plus has a Doctor Who trailer uh, mm -hmm. up right now that has about 5 million views, and it only has like 15,000 upvotes, and it's almost ratioed, by the way. So so that's embedded. Those are embedded views. You're embedded in the website. You're embedded uh, on other streaming services that will automatically play your video. It's a way to fucking fudge your views, basically, if you got oh. the money. If you got like the you money, past it. you can yeah. do it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's perfectly legal and everything. Um, but yeah, they have like 9 million views. This is normal interaction, by the way. This is absolutely authentic, normal interaction here. Like what, how many comments do they have? Uh, da, 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 da. You must 47,000 on Acolyte. 47,000 comments. Now I'm going to point back. I'm going to go back to that Doctor Who trailer on Disney Plus that has half the views of this, 5 million, still a lot, under 3,000 comments. Huh. Under wow. 3,000 comments. I love the first comment from this guy, Hooper drives the boat. Someone <laughs> is killing Jedi. It's Disney. <laughs> <laughs> the comments for this are so fucking good. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> what do you see? see? The comment section getting turned off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I accept space balls as canon over this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But yeah, five hundred and seventy-one thousand downvotes, and 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 our victory. It's it came at a great price. Uh, Star Wars came at a great price but yeah they can't hide it anymore they were able to for a long time uh when a lot you know when we were busting star wars balls fucking five years god this has been going on a long time man this has been going on this is going on for like a decade it's been going on for a fucking decade and uh yeah we, we've but i said this in my god i think it was my rise of skywalker review i'm like we'll be here we're fans we're gonna be here we're going to still like OG Star Wars when all this shit is just destroyed. We're still going to be here picking up the little pieces of what these corporations just uh, raped. Absolutely raped. And uh, it sucks. It sucks. And now I'm at a point, and it's not a black pill. It's just reality. Like, franchises are done. You know, with uh, Ghostbusters, like, it, it's, it, whether you liked it or not, nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit about it. Like nobody, it's it's it'll be gone. It'll be a fart in the wind. It'll be forgotten if it hasn't forgotten already. Um, and uh, you know, Alien Romulus. We were talking about the trailer yesterday. It's like I could care less. I got a Planet yeah. of the Apes. Planet of the Apes was my jam as a kid. I fucking love Planet of the Apes. Could loved care it too. This movie doesn't look bad. I just yeah. eh, okay, you know. And that that's uh, what Mahler was mentioning yesterday. Is we're kind of in the year of 
in the era of meh because they're trying to fix things and they just don't know how. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and and because they didn't know how to make these in the first place and they should have listened to the fucking fans. Oh well, they didn't. Yeah. And here we are, uh, Star Wars getting fucking ratioed. If you, when the day Disney bought Star Wars, everybody's pretty happy. We're like, hey, yeah, this I, looks like good decision. Good decision, Chris. Everybody's like it. Oh, Kathleen Kennedy. Hey, Kathleen Kennedy. We like Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, if you would have just like gone back in time and said, do you know, in a little over 10 years' time, a Star Wars trailer will be ratioed on Twitter. It will be almost entirely hated like people hate star wars now not just dislike it they hate it and then worse are now apathetic hardcore fans who grew up with this it was part of the fabric of their lives are apathetic to, could you imagine that happening fuck it happened and now also, these these people want to keep their fucking jobs they're out there trying to convince low information investors to keep their fucking jobs how they should never be allowed to work in Hollywood again. This was the biggest, easiest fucking layup in the world to make a Star Wars. Like, just gives Han, Luke, and Leia. That's all you need yeah. to do. Fuck. It's, it's so weird because, you know, I, I would argue, actually, that um, the sequels... Ru the sequels definitely ruined Star Wars, but it ruined my viewing of Star Wars. Disney is the company that popularized the phrase... Happily, and they lived happily ever after, right? All the fairy tales, for the most part, end with, and they lived happily ever after. Well, if you watch the original Star Wars trilogy, you get to Return of the Jedi, you see how happy everyone is celebrating. You know, Han and Leia are going to have a life together. They're clearly in love. Luke has redeemed his father. All this happy celebration with the Ewoks and, and overthrowing the emperor and knowing that in the very next movie, Han Solo gets stabbed in the chest from his own son who turned to the dark side. How did we get there? Like from that, that's why it's like in the first like, movie. <laughs> yeah. In the first movie, that's why I hated force awakens. I know it was, you know, look, and I, I, I look, it was, for me, Luke Skywalker was my, that was it. That's all I thought about in high school when I was a kid. It was just like Luke, I was a, in junior high, saw Star Wars, in high school, watched the films, like just loved it. And it was like that three-year wait was so long, especially when time, they've actually proven this scientifically, time moves differently based on your age. It moves faster when you're older. It moves slower when you're younger. But Man, that was a long wait for three years. And it was buying every magazine to get any morsel about Star Wars 2 or, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Jedi. And to have all that, like, just undone by Disney, it's, it's, I mean, I think it's, it's irresponsible. It's because she's destroyed the brand. You can't unsee the sequels. And then when you look back, you're like, yeah, this is great. The original trilogy, but... I know how it ends and it sucks. There's, I don't think there's anything wrong. And it was Harrison Ford that really wanted to kill the character. Oh, fuck Harrison Solo. Ford. I, I agree. I'm like, <laughs> look, sorry. Your image as a brand for telling, selling t-shirts and toys is worth more than your personal desire. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's nothing wrong with hyperspacing Part out of the, into the sunset. There's yeah, nothing wrong nothing with that. Nothing wrong with that. Or, or sacrifice, like sacrificing yourself yes. to save your son. Like we've gone over it a million times, but that's where that's where solo was always going to fucking fail because you're giving an origin care a, a story of a character you just fucking killed yeah, so in your know, back like, of your mind he's dead he's dead why do i care uh, uh yeah. you know and and also you we, you can't put a number on this maybe somebody can of of the potential money that they lost Billions, billions, billions of of dollars that they've they've that that were on the table for theirs for the taking that they lost. Oh, but those uh, acolyte action figures will make up for it. Have you seen those things? Star Wars Theory did a video. We did actually Film Threat did a video on it. Somebody made an AI. They used AI art and wrote a story. And it's actually someone who works in development in Hollywood. I corresponded with this person. They made a version. I think it's called What If. The Force Awakens was good. 
what if it was a good story? And he basically remade the sequels using AI imagery and told a completely different story using some of the new characters from the sequels and then the legacy characters, of course, the ones that we are beloved and made just told a different story. It was, and, and look, it's not perfect, whatever, but just this, his idea was so much better than what JJ and Lucasfilm came up with. It's fantastic. Yeah, and, and, and that's it's like 20 minutes. And that's, I'll find it. That's brilliant, but man, use your creative, you've use your creative energy on something that fucking deserves it. it. It does not star Wars. Disney star Wars does not deserve. What if the force awakens was better? You know, what if the twin towers were still fucking standing? What if my aunt had fucking gonads? She'd be my uncle. Like the shit is done. Right. Like you yeah, have creative energy. You only have so much. Don't fucking waste it on Disney star Wars. It, it's, right. it's not worth, not worth your time. It's not worth anything anymore, except for roasting. If you want to roast the shit out of it. Uh, right. that'd be fine. Like if you want to do a Disney Star Wars like a parody, like what was that? Uh what if Star Wars was uh directed by Zack Snyder? That video you showed me, that was fucking yeah, funny. I mean, that, that was so do stupid. something like that. Uh <laughs> make a comedy based on like Disney Star Wars and their whole aesthetic, and yeah. it, that would be probably pretty fucking funny just to roast it. But other than that, man, it is not worth your time. Oh my god. And uh it just the whole fact that like Bob Iger and everybody there are trying to justify their existence now, now, and and say we're going to turn things around, but we're still going to release the Acolyte. We just released Echo. We released the Marvels, but we're really going to turn things around in like four years. Uh, uh, shit, I, it's it, and people falling for it because they just don't know, and that's fine that you don't know, but like you're investing in a company that's. Uh, I am sure as hell is going to go down. Is going to go down. It's it's had its time. Every remember, I, I br I brought this up before. Warner Brothers was on top of the fucking world a decade ago. Yeah, on top of the yeah. world. They had fucking Harry Potter. They had Nolan Batman. Game of Thrones was in full swing. They were on top of the fucking world. Yeah, and uh, now they're in debt. How does that? How, how, bull, uh, look. Disney's going to be there soon, right? I mean, how much money and this this Snow White movie being pushed to next year, they're really kicking the can on that one. Uh, I'm sure it's a complete revamp. And I'll bet the original version, she was a warrior. You can show this. Our, our channel didn't get dinged for it. I don't know if you care or watch it later, but this, what if the Star Wars sequels were awesome? How long it's is a whole it? Well, it's like, you don't want to show that. You just want to yeah. like... I, it, it's 20 minutes, but oh, like, I'm not yeah. saying watch. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying recreationally. I, I watched, I was, I was captivated because it just, you know, my whole imagination was going wild with what the sequels could have been. If the focus was Han, Luke and Leia with a handoff to new characters that you would come to love. I think every star Wars movie did that. They were in, being introduced to new characters and this shows like how it could have been done. The guy who did this put a lot of effort into it. Star Wars Theory did a video on it and he was he was blown away. We did a video. Um, it's it, worth checking out just to see like this is the future of like this is AI powered. But the guy wrote the story and came up with the beats and it's the imagery is really cool. And Luke acts like Luke. They're all the characters as you see they would be at some point in the future. You know, Han Solo's like a retired general, but involved. It's it's freaking cool. I want to see them, you know, do what they did in the original movies, but it's dead and who cares? Yeah, Carrie's gone. Harrison doesn't want to do it. They're all fucking old. Mark Hamill's a prick. I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. The, the, and Mark Hamill, what a disappointment. Like, just a disappointment of, like, yeah. ugh. You want to talk about something? <laughs> Put Sorry, Gear. I'm, uh, all the links are from me in the private chat. I know of uh, videos we can't watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I, well, you could watch I'm it. Gonna watch them later. You could watch. I, it's just it. It is. Throw worth that up, X-ray girl. Oh, I I believe you. I do. Yeah. I just like, uh, it, man. If it was something, I still gave a fuck about. <laughs> right. I know. I know. I. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, hey, Star Trek. Oh 4. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Star Trek 4 
Uh, I the most interesting story about Disney Stars before we jump into this is dissecting its absolute failure. That's it. That's the only thing I'm interested in because I think it is a, a, a good story to tell, a good cautionary tale, a very good cautionary tale for the future about like what do you do with your franchise? Do you sell it to the devil? How much money do you really fucking need? Or do you want to sell your baby off like that? You know, uh, and also. Uh, you can't recreate these things. Like Star Wars, yeah. They'll, they'll do they're going to remake the original trilogy. I fucking oh. promise you. It's going to fucking it is closer now than ever. <laughs> okay? It is closer now than ever. They're going to do it. That's it, because that's the last card they have to play. Been saying that for a long time. They're just fucking too stupid right now, which is great. Speaking of stupid, Star Trek 4 beams up a new screenwriter the flight attendant creator, uh, Steve Steve Yoki Yaki. This is like the seventh announcement of Star Trek Four in the last whew, seven eight years. By the way, not a single actor is signed on. They have no money. <laughs> they have nothing. They just about every six or seven months, Paramount rolls out a Star Trek Four to see if there's any interest, and it's it's a, kind of a meme at this point. Yeah. Kind of a meme. Uh, creator of the Mac series, The Flight Attendant, is joining Starfleet as the new screenwriter for Star Trek IV. Story details remain under powerful cloaking device because they don't have any. But Paramount Pictures and Bad Reboot still intend uh, the project to be the final chapter for the cast that rebooted the franchise in the movie theaters in 2009. Star Trek, including blah, blah, blah. We know who they are. Bringing the cast back following 2016's Star Trek Beyond has proven trickier for the studio than finding an altruistic Ferengi. <laughs> uh, at least three previous attempts fell apart for various reasons. Uh, most recently with writer-director Matt uh, Shakeman, Shackman of WandaVision and screenwriter Liz, uh, Lindsay Bear. Uh, Sierra Burgess is a loser. Uh, is that how you say Sierra Burgess is a loser? Oh, yeah, that sounds great for fucking Star Trek. And Geneva <laughs> Robertson, I can't even say her fucking last name, Captain Marvel, a uh, writer from Captain Marvel. Uh, just what a shocker that that didn't uh, get off the ground. Uh, that the studio had slated to open in late 2023 when uh, Shackman left the film in 2022 to direct the Fantastic Four for Marvel Studios. However, Paramount pulled it from its slate and sent it back to space... Uh, to space doc and i who's directing fantastic four is he still directing it shackman they've changed it so many times I it was going to be the guy from no way home i thought that would have been a great choice yeah and he bailed out and then shackman came in uh who is who is it i think now? it's um IMDb. i'm pretty sure yeah it says he's still it well that movie's fucked yeah for sure Oh my God! Yeah, Matt oh. Shack, he's like did episodes of Wandavision. I don't know. He did some Game of Thrones stuff, dude. Star Trek Four comes out, man. It's it's. I don't even think it it hits 150 million. I think it'll be 100. It'd be it'd be such a massive flop. It will be a massive flop. But so, not just that. I think that was Robert Meyer Burnett said, you don't need a big budget Star Trek movie. No, you don't. You don't need a big budget Star Trek movie. It's on the ship and it's the characters and the writing. It's not some big V'ger thing with tons of special effects and battle. Like, you know, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It's not uh, ultimately when Star Trek was at its best, it's when it didn't need a bunch of visual effects. It was all about the character interaction. That's what it was about. And at its core, it was like originally in the sixth. I heard you guys talking about the old school Trek stuff, which was so great. Like it, it was a Western. It was a Western, right? Like, I love that. I love got the writing from the original series and Kirk being a galactic pussy hound was so I love I miss those days. Yeah. Yeah, he's involved. But Kurt was a captain. Like, I think a lot of the, yeah. it, it was problem solving. Lots of yes. problem solving. But yes. it was really good, and it and it solved some 
You know, and at the time, when I was a little kid, I didn't understand half most of the problem solving. I just liked the look right. of it. I'm like, this is cool. I like the music. I like the ships. Uh, I like the aliens. I like the space hippies. Maybe not so much. Uh, Yaki's involvement is the most promising sign of a forward momentum to the project uh, has had since. By the way, Bad Reboot has fallen on some dark days. They're really not making anything anymore. They're fucking desperate. And the thing they didn't care about in the first place, they just wanted to use as a stepping stone to go somewhere else, was Star Trek. And now they're falling mm. back. They're falling back uh, to the lowered expectation X because they tried to, they, they uh, went for the hot chick and the hot chick broke up with them. So now they're going back <laughs> to their old girlfriend who they use. Uh, and uh, that's basically what it is. They don't give a fuck about Star Trek. They've destroyed Star Trek. Now it's it's basically, remember, Paramount and uh, CBS, it was split. Now it's together, but it's essentially split again because uh, Secret Hideout has TV streaming rights and Bad Reboot has film rights. And, oh, by the way, Alex Kurtzman and Jar Jar Abrams hate each other now. So there's that. <laughs> But yeah, There's, no, you look, remember when Bad Robots, like, logo was on everything? Everything coming out? Everything. And now it's just, like, people kind of saw, saw now see the company for the fraud that it is. I think it was Rise of Skywalker. I think that that J.J. Abrams not being able to stick the landing on Star Wars, because I was willing, even after Last Jedi, I was willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. The uh, Everything that's happened in these First two sequel movies was done for a reason. There's going to be a finale that is going to unite, that is going to be have great Star Wars moments, that's going to bring back the beloved characters in a way that will be creative. And it was just freaking, it ended up being the worst Star Wars movie of all time. And that's saying something, that Rise of Skywalker. So. Uh, Yoki's involvement in the most promising sign of forward momentum in the project has had since the playwright started his TV career with MTV series Awkward and Scream before joining the writing staff of Supernatural for four years. His latest series, the Sandman Universe Adaption Dead Boy Detectives, will premiere on Netflix in April. Paramount is also developing a separate Star Trek project with writer Seth Graham Smith, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and director Toby Haynes, the fucking Black Mirror U.S. Callister episode. Fuck that episode, by the way. Fuck that. It was a straight up incel episode, and it turns yeah. out it fucked that shit. Uh, that would feature a new cast and a story meant for a kind of origin story for the. Fr what? They had one. It's called Enterprise. Yeah, it's called Enterprise. Wait a sec. So they're saying, I just assume it's like, oh, some another person just they're throwing they're throwing a screenwriter cash so they can just say to their yes, you know, that's say to everybody, oh, we're making a new. This is an all new cast. <laughs> Neither of these projects will happen. This is a waste yeah. of fucking uh, server space to put on their fuck. This is just an attempt for Paramount, who is in fucking shambles right now and the star trek yeah. franchise is in shamble to try to take a last minute shot they clearly don't know what they're doing none of this is going to excite star trek fans much less n normies this isn't going to excite star trek fans in the least bit so let it, it's dead jim <laughs> it's fucking Ooh. dead jim that's the text on your thumbnail. <laughs> Jesus. My God. It's 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 kind of phenomenal how many times they've announced. I can't even remember. If you if you know chat, how many times they've announced a writer and a director for Star Trek Four? It's gotta be seven. It's gotta be up to seven. It's as many movies as Kathleen Kennedy has announced that never happened. I think well that actually number might be more, actually, of Kathleen Kennedy announced. Star Wars projects that ended up not happening. There's supposed to be two new trilogies and just all this stuff. I'm curious what Dan and Dave were developing. Like what was the project or even Ryan Johnson? Like, well, what was it? You know, what was it supposed to be? Right. 
Uh, S.J. Clarkson, director of Madam Web, was supposed to direct a Star Trek four. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I remember when her name was all hot for a minute because she's lesbian. She's a director, so she knows how to, a lesbian and knows how to use a camera. Well, we got to hire her. <laughs> right. She get Dispro then. Uh, I think Dispro would do a much better job directing mm-hmm. Star Trek. Absolutely. Yeah. Andy has a lesbian haircut. Uh, he does. Yep. Very diverse. <laughs> <laughs> I love Disparu. Shout out to Disparu. Shout out to Disparu. <laughs> Shout out to Disparu. Also, I think this is interesting, and this is from Deadline. This is from Deadline. Uh, I think we all saw this one coming. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 here it is. It's the... Yeah, I'll pop it in there right there. Oh, I already have that. Yeah, we got that one. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised... Uh, that Hulu is going to be merging with Disney Plus. Okay. Like, I think we saw that happening. Hulu and Disney Plus bundle eventually become, launches as unified service. Company says viewing during three month beta exceeded its expectations. This is a way to pad their numbers, especially for the next report. Um, and I think eventually Disney Plus will just be a category on fucking Hulu because Hulu's been around longer. Uh, it's right. a better UI, it's an it's a easier experience. But yeah. you're going to be forced to get fucking Disney Plus, which fuck. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's what's going to happen. Uh, Disney Plus, bit of a failure. Bit of a failure when it's being forced to be bundled with this, forced in other bundles. They've put out uh, 199 uh, specials and uh, and none of it's fucking worked. It's just slowed right. slowed the losses. Hasn't stopped the bleeding. It's reduced right. the bleeding, but the bleeding remains. Disney mm-hmm. streaming bundle combined you uh, Hulu and D plus in uh, I called it D plus on peers uh, in uh, one service officially launched Wednesday morning. Oh, I'd also <laughs> I said Lady Gaga. I think they got confused because they. I mean, I know I was waiting for somebody to correct me. We were talking about <laughs> nobody Joker did. Too. <laughs> nobody. Did. I just went and Lady Gaga. <laughs> Uh, The service officially launched Wednesday morning, ending a three-month beta period described by the company as a success. Uh, The dual plan Hulu and D Plus is priced $2 higher than each individual subscription alone. It follows in the uh, esteemable footsteps. Took me a minute there. I got there. Uh, On the three-service Disney bundle first uh, introduced in 2020, which also includes woke ass shit ESPN, which I haven't watched a second of in uh, who six years. I don't watch ESPN. I, I was I loved ESPN. I used to, yeah. Especially loved it. Used to watch it like in the 90s and early 2000s, and it was, I mean, it was fun. I I don't know. I just really liked it. Like it was just. They talked about sports. That's kind of why I liked it. And it was great debates. And then, you know, whatever. You'd sort of catch up on games you didn't watch. I, I liked it at the time. Now it's just unwatch. It is an unwatchable channel. Yeah. Unwatchable. And that's why I we look haven't at the watched internet. it. I look at the internet to get scores or if I care about playoffs or yeah. whatever. And generally it's just whatever. Exactly. Sports ball. I'm... I don't care. They've embraced gambling now, yet they're going to bust players for it. Like, right. They're embracing gambling and they keep Pete Rose out of the Hall of Fame. You fucking hypocritical pieces of shit. <laughs> right. Uh, unlike the ongoing offering, though, the two service one is focused on streamlining the consumer experience and pooling the content of two large established streaming players within a single outlet. In other words, Disney Plus ain't doing so good. <laughs> right. It's a really nice way of, hey, we're really excited about this bundle, that other streaming service we put bi- bil- billions of dollars into. Complete failure. And we now we have to bundle it. But, man, give Bob Iger his job. Keep him going. <laughs> That's all. It's And the fact that he'll win <laughs> after all this, dude. Yeah. I mean, it is a bit like changing the captain of the Titanic after you hit the iceberg at this point. So, yeah, it is. Like, <laughs> like, what's the point? Go down with the ship, you know? <laughs> I guess. 
I guess. Uh, I don't care about Godzilla and King Kong. That's one of our. It's projected to have 135 million global opening. Okay. I'm going to watch it. It looks silly. It looks really fucking silly. They really they, like uh, went heavily with the baby Kong thing, you know, because, uh, uh, oh, no, oh, look at the baby Kong. Oh, oh fuck. Everything's going to be, everything eventually, when a franchise is over, it, or when a, when a property gets to the baby version of it, like, baby <laughs> yes. Muppet, yes. Or Bat Might, every time it's sort of like we've run out of ideas. We did the female version. It's we got Oliver. Bat Girl, Bat it's bringing in Bat Oliver. Girl. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, cousin <laughs> Oliver. <Yeah. It's> like, <laughs> you guys Dude. are too old now. I mean, you know, Bobby's growing a beard on the Brady Bunch. I we know. gotta bring in a little kid. You know, like it's just that's every property you bring in the cute, right? Like, I don't know. It's it is what it is. But you just have to laugh. But yeah, no, I'm seeing that Godzilla movie. Which is, first of all, very exciting. I launched this new show on Film Thread called Versus, and we're having all Asian YouTubers on Monday, on Monday's show. Oh my so, God! Seriously? So you're gonna, yeah, have, X, you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have X Ray Girl in in nine X Ray Girls on uh, nine Kira times. Lynn, yeah, it's Kira just Lynn, me. <laughs> Project Egg Roll, Alaning. Oh my, my buddy God! From it's Reactor. a family reunion. It's all gonna be Asian YouTubers for the American about Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Rob Burnett will be there. So we're going to be like the Russ Tamblin and Nick Adams. Of, there you go. Uh, <laughs> if, a very obscure references and, that and no if, one on the And you can't say it like Godzilla. You got to go, Gajira. 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 Oh, man. So Gajira for your call. We're just, we're just, just like having that. fun. We're just having fun. <laughs> Have fun. But no, I, I'm, I don't know. Like, I know it's going to be bad, but it's going to be sort of silly like the old... Yeah. Remember the Godzilla cartoons where Godzilla like puts his I legs remember. up and sort of goes like this, like he's doing like a Dude, doing like the Kirk thing. I'd love, yeah, I'd love the, the two legged like, kick. The old movie, of, dude. We were that was that was all we had to watch. Chris, you were there. Well, you weren't in L.A. I was in, I was in Southern California when okay. Tom Hatton would do his sh stuff on Channel Five, and all mm -hmm. we'd have is Twilight Zone marathons, Godzilla marathons. Uh, he play, um, wow. What's the one Santa Claus goes to Mars, Santa Claus yeah. and the Martians. He played that one yeah. all the time. Uh, yeah, it was great. And Star Trek fucking Star Trek marathons. That's all we had to watch. I, love I was them. spoiled as a kid. We get, we had two, we had like six channels, not three. Cause I was so close to LA. So we get all the LA channels. If you, if you know, on, especially like at night, the antenna would work a little better. I was in Detroit and it was like, they just had like the channel 20 channel 56. They were all the UHF channels had all the great reruns. Right. And that was it. Like, I just remember reading the TV guide and circling like when things were on, like Logan's run was on network television and it like kind of blew my mind, you know, of course, oh, Barbarella TV. was on network right. television. And then, yeah. then when I got older, I saw like the real version. I'm like, Oh damn, I missed yeah. a lot of this movie. <laughs> Same thing with like Night of the Living Dead when they would even play it at late night. They cut out. There's like full frontal nudity in that uh, uh, and a lot of nudity in Night of the Living Dead, which makes sense because a corpse would rise. And so Channel 13 whatever. would occasionally forget to edit the boobs out of Benny Hill. Oh, nice. That's why all the kids watch Benny Hill. It was funny, too. It was funny, too. But yeah, KCOP Channel 13 in L.A. KTLA Channel Five, I remember all those. I do. Channel Seven, Channel Twenty had all the like. Old, it was every day. It was Ultraman, Johnny Thank Sacco you. and his giant robot. It was, um, you know, the the sixty six Adam West Batman TV show uh, on all the time. Uh, all the, it was every day. Five every in day the morning, they played the animated the sixty Spider Man cartoon, and then, um, oh. uh, and then Speed Racer. Lost in Space. Lost, they would play Lost in Lost Space. In space. Did, you ever, did you ever buy that box set that they put out? Fox put out this box set of all the episodes of Lost in Space, and they have like the original episode as it aired in the '60s with commercials. With commercials. It's so that's such a good. God, I pre-ordered that. I was so excited. Star Blazers. Oh, 
Oh, good. Was yeah. So much good stuff. There was. Like, and, and was now we have more insane. stuff and we have less good stuff. Right. <laughs> yes. There was, this was a magical era in the mid sixties was like this golden. When you look at the shows that were created and I don't know that, you know, it was appreciated at the time, even things like, you know, like things like Johnny quest or the sixties, fantastic four cartoon where the human torch was the human torch, like a man on fire, like, yeah, you know, which is going to take on a different meaning when Disney does it. But, um, a you man know, on flame. Not Herbie the robot. <laughs> not Herbie the robot. Although he'll be in it. He'll probably be in it. He'll probably be in the new one. I mean, Dude, whatever. Mez did you did, did you see the Mezco? Fantastic Four. I set? bought it. Yeah. I pre-ordered it like as soon as it was available. Dude, I just got it. It's so they good. Need, like I, that's the one thing I miss about the, like the hot toys. They don't do like Sideshow will do some comic versions, but not many. I'd rather much rather have just the comic versions. But that Fantastic Four set is dope. It is. It's a I got something I got to show you, Gary. And and the tin it comes in is unbelievable. The packaging is fucking perfect. Great. I just got this. I had to kind of. Dude, they did they did a Solomon Kane. I got that too. They did a Conan. Oh, what is oh. this? It's all the movie Batman, except no sixty six. I Rett. want to you. see that. Oh, oh shit! Is, is Mezco? Is that Mezco? Is that Mezco? No, no. no it's um. um Todd McFarlane? Let me, yeah. Um, no, it's just, it's WB celebrating every story. So it's. So those so are plas cool oh, those plastic figures or are, are, do they have like cloth costumes? Because there's another they're, company. They're, they're, plastic. they're plastic. But what's cool is if you see here, it's got, you know, the bat signal, but then it's got every version of the bat signal based on. So you can change, change it. Oh. You can change out the bat signal. Oh, that's so cool. All the Batman. Batman. The Batman. So yeah, this was it says DC multiverse. What was this? Anyways, McFarland toys. McFarland. McFarland's toys. it's all right. I want to touch your Batman's man's. <laughs> I don't know what to call them. <laughs> There's a wall. Hey, wanna, my hair matches my fig my cartoon. Yeah. Avatar. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Nice haircut. Chris. And I guess I guess we're gonna have another one to premiere on Friday Night Tights soon. Ooh. Uh, um I have been told that the episode is too long. So Dom Polcino, who made it, cut it into three shorter versions, and he would like to premiere all three on FNT. But this is for your call. He doesn't want to do anything until you give the word. So it's up to all up to you, really. Yeah. I think FNT would be a great place to premiere it. Yeah, well, I think we could do that. We'd space it out, you know. Yeah, just like every half hour or something show like another or like whatever as a break like let's watch but it's apparently one story but in three shorter parts i love it, it. it flows better that way i absolutely so, love it yeah i can't wait man yeah i can't um it's not mezco but another company that diamond i i bought them you you saw them because i bought them at comic-con so they're like eight they're eight inch they're the same size as Mego. so they have like mm -hmm. rubber and cloth costumes and they did uh, Nolan's Batman. They did Burton's Batman. I, I got them right over there. I can't reach them right now. Right. They are fucking dope. They, they are great. They just need to do those with one six scale. I mean, with the comic versions because they did a Superman too, which is great. I have a Superman right next to me. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's right here. Nice. Right there. Oh wow. Yeah, I need. I, I need a new place. It's six foot. I've got a lot of. He's six foot five. <laughs> oh no it's fucking huge oh man but yeah I, I i need a new place for my stuff i mean i've been wanting to move for a long time just as i missed having a garage you could my garage was kind of like my man cave where i could just do manly type stuff and work on stuff with tools and like uh that sounds weird <laughs> the way you I'm explained it loud. it's just so uh... i'm not gonna i'm not gonna repeat what i just said uh, I just <laughs> no need to <laughs> he's a neuter chris place. i understand <laughs> you both have been to my place mm -hmm. in pasadena it's tiny you know it's like um it's weird especially when you see like my the youtube space it's like it looks bigger than it that is. was i told you at the time that was our house that's the same size really? as our house in san francisco with we had uh well, four people living it, and then for a long time we had six people living in it. So that's insane. Yeah. So yeah, I just want a garage and a little bit of land. 
Uh, oh, Texas? Man. Is that what yeah. I'm hearing? Texas? Yeah. Otisburg. <laughs> Otisburg. I'll move to Otisburg. Move to Otisburg, Texas. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I got to see what's happening this year. It is... Um, the world seems to be going to a dark place. And also, by by the way, the Diddler is trending on that. Oh, God, I saw Social that. Media. Diddler. <laughs> oh the God. Diddler? Yeah. yeah, Diddler. Oh, man, what <laughs> oh, is happening? Great. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? I don't... The thing I'm blissfully unaware of so much drama and so much going on. It has to be explained to me because I kind of tune it out. I'm like, I got other stuff to do. I got other stuff I'm working on. Like, um, but eventually someone will catch me up uh, on, on all the nonsense. Here's, going. here's Epic Mike. He tweeted it out. Here you go. I love Epic Mike. I love Epic Mike. Me too. Great. Epic Meek. Epic Meek. <laughs> but I guess this is going around. What is it? The diddler. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> P. Diddy, aka the diddler, was out here dressed dressing up like a supervillain, just telling everyone he was a bad guy. Now he's blowing up bridges and running uh well poop running from the cops. 2024 is wild, y'all. Wow. I th see this is the thing. I think I even tweeted this a while back where I was talking about like crime is out of control in LA. It just is. Uh yeah. Uh, not where I live. But like in LA, it's insane the amount of crime just like openly happening. But wouldn't it be cool if those criminals actually had like costumes and like all the other people dressed like where they just says like henchman number one, henchman number two? I almost want to get a bunch of shirts and just pass them out and just like I'd love to see it on the news, right? Like henchman one, two, and three. And then they have like bowler hats, right? And then like black shirts. Like, right. and then maybe or white gloves and then someone can be like in the, I, I just think that would be really, it, it would just make a lot of the crime news less depressing. You know, I, it might, it might get to that. Remember the vigilante guardian angels in New York. Remember them? Yes. Yeah. Curtis Sliwa. Curtis yep. Sliwa was the guy. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Like they were just like, Hey, they were just keeping things safe. They had like protocols where they worked with the police department we're at the point where that's necessary, but who would risk it? Because even cops are, you know, open to lawsuits over, you know, so many things, so many rules. They're, they're, you know, their hands are tied on so many things. There was that super based uh, sheriff from Riverside County that laid out in like five minutes why things are terrible in California. And it's all, it's, it's just bad legislation and them being restrained in terms of what they can do. But he laid it out. He says, this is, you want to, you want to hear why crime is bad? And he just sort of goes through. First of all, he blows away that the statistics are all a lie. And then he goes and that gives an explanation of like, these are the laws that are holding us back and they need to be rolled back so that we can actually well, do what we're hired to do. I think we can all understand that the crime statistics supposedly that are, by the way, they're not going down, but that they claim are going down is because they're not reporting as many crimes. They're not, Bingo. It, they're just not. So it's, it's, uh, they're at the point now where they're just lying to you, to your face and you're, you're, you're walking out your door in these big cities and you're seeing more crime than ever. And they're going, no, nope, crime's going down. And if you have don't you think seen, so, you're a racist. And that <laughs> shit doesn't work. Thing, have you seen the thing, Gary, where they misidentify the racial makeup of the criminals? Oh, the No, they're calling everybody a white guy, basically. Yeah, everyone. But you're looking at the pictures going, and this is like public information. So this is, this I is can the part. See it's a this lie. Is, this is, this is the part where the culture war is important. It's important in every facet in our life. And now we have to pay attention. Unfortunately, they don't want us being comfortable. So fine. Let's not be comfortable for, for a bit. Uh, I still think, say, enjoy your comforts. You've earned them, but maybe take a little extra time to cut through the fucking bullshit. Cause we're going to have to, we're all going to have to do that now. Uh, and, and I was guilty as anybody, you know, not giving a, f you know, I was in San Francisco. I didn't give a fuck who was elected. Cause I'm like, nobody I felt for is going to win. It's like, why should I fucking bother? And there was a point where it actually affected our lives, like adversely, horribly, horribly. Mm -hmm. And I, well, we got to get the fuck out of here now. And next place I go, I want a fighting chance. I want to know who I'm voting for. And now I, now I know now I care. And we have to do that with our entertainment and everything. Absolutely. Everything. We have to fucking call this shit out. Uh, and that's where we are getting some victories, but it is far from over. And yeah, now we have a government 
that's always been lying to us, but now we know it and they still do it because they don't care because they don't give a fuck. It's unbelievable. Do you remember, like, I remember actually, you know, getting emotional over speeches that politicians would give about hope, about like, um, you know, the American dream, about what America represents around the world. And I feel just completely betrayed. Now they don't even give lip service no. to, to values, family, the American dream, you know, living wage. They, no one even uses those words. Dude, no one uses those words anymore. It's disgusting. the most dangerous thing to democracy is 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 a, a president is going to be one term, is, whether you like the orange man or not. That's the most. That's apparently and and people who like him are the most dangerous things to democracy. Despite all the other stuff you've actually seen from current administration and past administrations destroying this country. Yeah. So it's like you've said before, and many others said, if you hear some kind of like children safety act, it's it's the opposite. Anything you hear now is oh, yeah. just the fucking opposite. I've kind of felt like that all my life, but I'm glad like it's been absolutely proven. Um, so here, back to entertainment. Put this uh, tweet up from uh, hmm. Azura. I hope I said that right. I follow Azura. her on Twitter. She uh, she's the one who started the respect for Tolkien. Um, Hashtag, she gets it trending once in a while. It's fucking awesome. But uh, yeah, for fellowship, I, see, I can't go to the fellowship of fans because I'm blocked by the fellowship of fans. Um, <laughs> but apparently, right. although we've heard absolutely nothing about Rings of Power season two, not a frame of footage, not a statement from Amazon, absolutely fucking nothing. Uh, the statement that supposedly came from Amazon that we're getting season two this year actually came from the Hollywood Reporter. It did not come from Amazon. So Fellowship of Fans saying exclusive. The Rings of Power season three will film in the UK just like season two did and will have a much lower budget than season two with a focus uh, to reduce departmental costs. Some of the costs for departments such as hair, makeup, costume... Uh, I wouldn't spend any less on costumes because your costumes suck. Uh, sound, etc., were more expensive in the UK than in New Zealand. Then why did you fucking go there? I think that what they're doing is they're going to get plates, and a lot of it is going to be volume and cheap on the cheap. That's where they're going to cut back is well, on the scale and spectacle. They'll have second unit. In New Zealand, well, we're, we're bearing the lead here. This was watched by 125 million people, Chris, on its first fucking day. This is one of their most Wait. successful fucking series of all time. Why are they cutting the budget? This is a global phenomenon, according to fucking Amazon. Why are they cutting the budget? Oh, because it's not. Because it was all fucking lie. They lost 63% of their audience who never even fucking finished season one. Season two will be worse. So 63% of the audience bailed. So let's just be nice and say that 37% that fucking hung on till the end is going to be your audience for season two. After season two, another 63%. I feel like Scott Steiner. <laughs> it spells disaster for you. Another 63% is going to be off of that 37% that might hang on to season two. I think it's lower than that. If it's true, Fellowship of the Fans apparently uh, had to go out and admit that they had been spreading some misinformation that was purposefully fed to them by Amazon and other scoopers to find out who uh, is spoiling all the stuff. Um, I can't speak to Fellowship of the Fans and, and how many uh, things they got right. I can speak to As and yours truly hearing from somebody who was absolutely fucking right about everything. <laughs> oh, which was funny. Which was funny. And it was just like the Game of Thrones season eight spoilers. When, when I was being told what was going to happen, specifically with Galad Guy Ladriel swimming across an entire fucking ocean and running, to <laughs> running into Sauron on a fucking boat. I'm like, you... A raft, not a boat. You are fucking high. 
That is not going to happen. And it happened. Wow. Yeah, you look back on that, and those were fun. But damn. House of the Dragon looks pretty good, though. I got to say. It does look good. It looks good. I'm I'm actually, I'm excited. And props to them for not waiting. A, I mean, they almost did two years, but they a little less than two years. And now they're going to, they shaved off. I mean, if it's good, it can always go downhill. We understand that. But they shaved off a couple of episodes so they can now turn it around every year. So we will not be waiting two years between seasons. That's the only fucking way these things are going to work. You can't you can't have these long breaks uh, between seasons, especially if you're in the binge model, which we talked about yesterday. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get the soups. You want to get the soups? What do you got coming up on uh, on your on film threat today, bud? We're going to talk about a couple things: a three body problem, which I know you've seen. I have seen all um, of. I so I have a friend who's Chinese and speaks fluent Mandarin, filling me in on like what's coming. I'm ex- I am excited about it. Are we getting I mean, a season it, two? It, I'm, I, it's very popular. It was number one on Netflix. So I'm going to guess there's going to be a season two. Uh, I don't think they would have invested that much. And at the Netflix shop, you know that like VR helmet that you can wear? You can buy it. It's, a, it's like $110 on the Netflix shop. You can actually get that helmet, which is kind of cool. Um, I didn't know there was a Netflix shop. I uh, you told me about it. Disper just sent I, me a, sorry, Disper just sent me a message on that and pointed out that yes, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but that's exactly how I said the shit was gonna go down with the rings of power. That we're gonna get oh. a reduced episode, reduced budget, third season that will probably be their last. That's the way. So I'm you think third right season's now. gonna wrap it up? Oh oof. they are pulling the plug on that one. And just wrap up the storyline. Wrap whatever, up the storyline. And they could, uh, They uh, at this point, <laughs> they just make some shit up like they did and just fucking end it. Sorry to interrupt you there, but. Oh, no worries. So we'll be talking about a bunch of movies with Alan, that film industry watch thing we looked at earlier. And then, um, uh, yeah, Three Body Problem, which Alan has seen. And I saw that new Adam Sandler movie that's on Netflix, Spaceman. How is it? Become, it it's, it's okay. It's okay. I, I was... What's weird about this movie, I did the wrong thing. I watched it at night with all the lights off and then went to bed thinking about spiders. Don't do what I did. Okay. Um, if you are afraid of spiders, if you are an, an arachnophobe, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being an arachnophobe. Not a, No issues with anyone who's an arachnophobic. But um, it's it's, look, I just love thoughtful science fiction, the idea of, one guy in space going to investigate this thing that's happening and has issues with his wife on this journey. That's going to be like a year or more. Like um, it's, it's good. It's good. But like, you know, yeah, it's good. Okay. But not, three body, you're, three not, body, you're not, problem, you're not, you're not selling me on this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I know. The three body uh, problem. I mean, just the one thing you saw that clip going around. I think I retweeted it. Like, yeah, yeah. That part's great. Of, I, I, yeah. That is crazy. The culture revolution stuff. That apparently, is a that's commentary. that's not in the ten cent version, by the way. Uh, apparently, it's not. Yeah, and it's in the book chronologically, like in the middle of the book. They even kind of changed it. Like they had to kind of the commentary, the social commentary that the writer put in. He had to kind of hide it, in you know, bury it in the story. Here's, so, yeah, I I was really liking it, and I thought it had kind of a weak ending. I thought but, the ending was a little a weak. Setup. I, I, it's I a agree. setup, and, and I would feel better about it if I knew season two was, like, right around the corner. And this is my same, that's fucking same thing. I, like, I really like Dune, didn't like where the first one ended. If that one was, like, right around the corner, that was my only complaint about the fucking movie, was, like, I just I just thought that ending was a little, meh, you know? And, um, it, yeah, it felt like I needed a little bit more at that ending. Yeah. I hate I hate the ending of Dune Part Two, because it totally destroys. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, we'll, we'll, but, uh, but, but we're gonna. Do, but I yeah, mean, I would say rant. like check out Three Body Problem. I think, uh, I think Tim Pool's assessment of of one of my complaints is accurate, which is you'll get like some great scene of some like of the, of 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 a murder, 
right, of a murder or a potential murder or somebody getting kidnapped or something like that, you know? And then it goes right into an interpersonal drama scene of two people, like a boyfriend and a girlfriend fighting. It's like, fucking right. stop, you know? And then there's that, <laughs> now, did you find that one character, what's her name, Augusta, uh, Augie? Oh, she was so annoying. Yeah. She, that, that's where they just sort of put all of the cringe into one character. Into one character. And, uh, yeah. That's my big complaint about the series. But Liam Cunningham, Sir Davos, was fucking yeah. great in it. He, he was is so good. So fucking good in it. Yeah. And and uh, I, Benedict Wong was really fucking good in it, too. He was good. Yeah. There's just that's the one thing that they do really well is character. And according to my friend who's read the book in Mandarin, he says the original book, they kind of like just took a few characters and divided them up into a bunch of characters. The, the book is not character driven. It's mostly about the science and the events. It's not character. So the main big change they made is they made it mostly about character but, and at, created new characters based on attributes of others. Here's what it's got going against it. Not the greatest ending in the world. Very melodramatic. Uh, really cool concepts that I like. The fucking yeah. concepts in it are very yeah. Asian and fucking cool. Although they borrow a lot from like early Art Bell days. Um and and I love that stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, cost one hundred and eighty million dollars to two hundred million dollars. That's where the budget estimate is uh, for eight episodes. Um, and no word on season two yet at all. And if we get the word on season two, well, apparently they've been making this one for two years, two and a half years. So it's like two and a half years. Oh. Like nobody's gonna give a fuck. Nobody's gonna. Did care. they drop um, it all together? And they dropped it all at once. Day? They dropped oh, all what so not. it will it will be completely out of the conversation in two weeks. Mm. And it's you know really high concept, and we want stuff like that. I want stuff like this, I love it, but uh yeah, man. Should have and I know they went into the second book, right? That's what they said. Like part of this goes into the second book. Yeah, they borrow actually from books two and three, is my understanding. So, uh, Master Austin for twenty five dollars says, "Hail new nooner panel, y'all excited for baseball returning tomorrow?" I well, it kind of did return for my team. We already played a couple games in in a Korea, split split with those fucking nasty Dodgers, uh, nasty cheating. Do no, I don't care. Uh, also, <laughs> thoughts on the whole uh, Otani situation? I find it very fucking hard to believe that he just oh, there's four hundred. Four and a half million dollars missing from my account. And it's my interpreter who did all the betting and I had nothing to do with it. But it wasn't on baseball. If it was on baseball, then I don't give a fuck. Nobody should be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Bet on bet on what you want. I know it's it was with like a an illegal bookie. I don't care. I don't care. I don't think anybody should be in trouble. If it's what if he wasn't betting on baseball and you guys take all that fucking uh that uh that gambling money uh for advertising, then he shouldn't be in trouble. And Pete Rose should be in the fucking Hall of Fame. Josh Kelsey for nineteen ninety nine, just drops it and leaves. Just drops it and leaves. Uh, oh, and by the way, if uh, major sports inviting in all these, uh, you know, all the betting for advertising and stuff, yes, shit's gonna get thrown. You you've you've invited that wolf into the door, and yes, eventually somebody will get busted. Throwing a game in one of the sports. Just, just fucking guaranteed it. Uh, there's player salaries that kind of keep that from happening. They're really fucking high, so I don't think it'll be a star. Uh, but ump, ref, even a, a player with a good contract that got himself in a little trouble gambling, drugs. There's so much potential. So you invited that wolf in the door. It's going to happen. And then that breaks the trust in your game. That breaks the trust in your game. Yeah, it's disheartening. Yep. Uh, Matthew Hammond for nineteen ninety nine. The Ghostbusters versus uh, Stream was great, Chris. They should do a oh, soft thanks. reboot of the new cast that are comedians if they will continue the series as a Spengler family cannot carry it, but the B-plots to two or three with half the cast. Yeah, we, we talked about that, too. It's like they should have yeah. done this a decade ago, right? You get new comedians... Zach Galifianakis, uh, you know, 
just pick some comedians from uh, uh, you know, Paul Rudd's fine. Zach Galifianakis, Paul Rudd. Pick some uh, uh, comedians. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn would have been a fucking good Ghostbuster. Right. You know, from like 10 or 12 years ago. And it would have been funny. And it would have worked. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I look. There was like a buddy of mine, um, Sifax. So I think you you've met him. He came up with like what I thought was like a better story, which was the you know the original Ghostbusters are there. They have this device to cross over into the spirit realm. They need to use that in order to defeat the villain, uh, the forgettable villain, and they do that and reunite with Egon in the in the spirit world would just have been a more interesting story and none of this stuff of like the conversation i hated is when winston was talking to you know with what was talking to dan Aykroyd, whatever about it's our golden years we're old no one wants to see that no one wants to see that that's like that's like you know indiana jones complaining oh my back like they never did that i mean like it just in star trek in the movies, there was the thing about like Kirk having to wear glasses, which you'd think in the future, they'd have some laser eye surgery that would just correct it, which is stupid, but whatever. I just, I don't like references. I'm to allergic characters. to Rhett Lax five. What's that? I'm allergic. He was allergic. Remember? Oh, Star right. Right, right. He was allergic yeah. to Rhett Lax five, but still like, I don't know. Like it just, I, I think that was such a dumb, dumb, unnecessary conversation. You could have cut the scene. Yeah, no, I, 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 that, I didn't think the movie things. needed to exist at all. Like, I, I, yeah. I did not like it. So, yeah, it's a bummer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think, it, you know what, just use the same formula. You get comedians that are fucking funny. Uh, and that would have pro- and, and then don't be so self-referential. At, don't be self-referential at all. Just go ahead yeah. with some new Ghostbusters and take it seriously because that's why the first one worked and none of them have truly worked like the first one since and never will. Because it's like, oh, Slimer. It's like, whatever. Like, it would have been interesting to go into the spirit realm. That would have been really interesting to do. That would have been something I would have liked to have seen 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, it just It's all of this is too late. Like a yeah. sequel to Beetlejuice? A sequel to Beetlejuice. Are we living? This is 40 years ago. David Lynch's Dune came out in 1984. Beetlejuice came out. Um, what else? Um, or I, I'm a bit wrong about Beetlejuice. Uh, what else came out? Uh, Ghostbusters came out in 1984. We're getting these follow ups to these movies. Was 86 Beetlejuice was late. Yeah, 86 yeah. or 88. 84 I think it's 88. Was yeah, 86 are- was Pee Wee's Big Adventure, right? Right, I'm, tr- like just, I'm trying to think this in relation to high school, but since I never right, went, right. I was already kicked out by then. So I'm pretty sure I spent a lot because I spent a lot of time at malls, getting yeah. really fucking high and seeing <laughs> movies because I had nowhere to go. So I would just watch movies all day and get really fucking loaded. Um, yeah, I would go to the Oakland Mall in Michigan and go see movies, and it was like, that was when it was like the first mall theater I remember where you could switch screens and it was really easy to do. Oh, super easy, yeah. yeah. They had it designed. I was at the University Town Center in uh, in La Jolla. It's super bougie now, but it was just kind of a, a mall where all the little skate rats and punk rockers and metalheads would go and hang out because there was a fucking huge ice rink and a huge arcade and then a movie theater. Yeah. And then, like, and then yeah. they had a Harmony House where I'd go shop for records And then sort of a hipster punk rock like clothing store that I would hang out at. So whatever. We'd all be right. It's going to sound bad, but it's, it's not like your typical, it was a white van, but it was a 1969 Dodge white van with a bunch of fucking like that barely worked. My friend Theo, who was like six foot six and had a 12 inch fan Mohawk and all of us would just pour out of that van, fucking smoke and shit. It was great. Good old days. Uh, Valiant Renegade for $20. Uh, Disney had no case. Good Lord. Who saw that coming? Uh, the settlement a uh, week before Dis annual Disney's annual shareholder meeting. So Iger can announce Florida plans and try to fend off pelts after wasting two years of stockholder time. Yep. 
It, this is all, it's all optics, right? That, that's all this fucking yeah. is. Uh, and Valiant Renegade knows this. Like, yes. it's just optics. Their announcements, Taylor Swift, uh, Epic Games may or may not happen. It's just fucking announcements. And we've seen this in movies. You know, Kathleen Kennedy announces four Star Wars movies. We haven't seen shit. We haven't seen shit. And now they're just turning D plus shows into movies. Uh, Pride Inc. Chronicles for 20. Uh, check out Valiant Renegade, by the way. Uh, he'll be streaming next. I don't know when the invest. Uh, I think a week from today. Pretty sure it's a week from today where we get the results of the votes and everything. Uh, Pride and Chronicles for 20 British pounds, proper proper money right there. Thank you very much. It says, hello and uh, hello all, and apologies if it's a bit off topic. You're at the right show if it's off, top, off topic. <laughs> uh, but regarding Doctor Who trailer, I think Gatwa has a sort of fake charisma. He has no charisma. It's not even fake. I.e., he's young and black, probably gay, and says things like, show me the love, but really... He has no depth yet. No, he does. The doctor needs the thousand yard stare. Um, I was talking to Mahler and I watched Serenity yesterday together. That's after the show. And we said that Malcolm Reynolds, great character, has has a doctor quality. What's that doctor quality? He could be fun. He could be goofy. And on the turn of a hat on a on a dime, he could flip and be scary as hell. That's what the doctor is. And honestly, um, Tom Baker was the best at it because he he was both both at the same time. He's the only one who could really be both at the same fucking time. But then, you know, uh, with with Tenet and and mainly with Matt Smith, Matt Smith could do that, too. He could the Matt, Matt Smith could be a tenant like doctor and a first doctor. All in the same scene. So that's that's what the doctor, whoever the doctor is, that's what Jody was missing. Jody had no gravitas. She had no charisma. And neither does Shudi Gatwa. Shudi Gatwa, you know, like his the, his part in the Barbie movie is Shudi Gatwa. And that's probably the parts he should play. Little musicals. He should be the gay best friend. Uh, he, he could be the, uh, the American Society of Magical Gay Best Friends. He can be that. You know, that's that's kind of what his role is. You know, not the fucking doctor. Yeah, I, I I saw that trailer. They I saw the trailer they dropped. Wow, I have no interest in it at all. Uh, There's nothing that like, you know, even with the first David yeah. Tennant Doctor Who trailer, there was things in there you go okay. But like, again, they brought back Donna. And the 10th Doctor, he was the 14th Doctor, but they basically brought back the 10th Doctor, and it didn't work. Mm. That It's over, baby. Uh, Jared Singer for $20. Hey, Gary, it's my birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Happy and I'm currently birthday. recovering from having two teeth pulled. Why'd you do it right before your birthday? Well, I know it's hard to get appointments these days. Or maybe you're doing it for the drugs. Oh, the I don't know. Line. Yeah, uh, but I closed my <laughs> eyes and thought of Melanie Mack to get through it. <laughs> Oh my. Now I know I'm a simp. Congrats on one million. It's okay, simp. <laughs> I guess whatever it takes to get through it, you know, do what you gotta do. It's all in your mind. It's not against the rules. I guess. How just dis- how disgusting what's happening with Melanie, where like this journalist announces I'm looking for dirt on Melanie. Did you see that? I know. Oh, yeah. I'm not aware of a lot of drama, but this I saw. The, the former so... sex worker is looking for dirt on Melanie Mack. <laughs> yeah. Like, and she's a, Melanie's a pretty public person, um, you know, with her feelings and thoughts. And she's, you know, has a right to them. I just I saw that. I was just, that's horrific. It's horrific. It's, it's, it also gonna, shows no. that she is over the target. And the media is losing when they have to when they have to focus on a single YouTuber, on a single yeah, YouTuber, yeah. they they fucking lost the plot. They've lost the argument. It sucks for Melanie that she has to go through that, but we we've all gone through it. And uh, the best thing to do is just you know, for one, if they reach out for comment, fuck no, because they'll twist your words. 
you know, they'll absolutely twist your words. So don't even fucking bother. Uh, and yeah, and then make a video about it when it comes out. It's all you need to do. It's all you need to do. But Kotaku, it's a fucking mess. It's always been a mess. And you think it's still going to exist in, in a bit? Like, no, none of these sites are going to exist. Websites are fucking dying. The investment money's out. Uh, ad money is down. Uh, Neon from uh, Clownfish has been talking. He he runs a website. Been doing it for years. Uh, oh yeah. And Jeremy from the Quartering has talked about it too. And he, and he used to work in advertising for websites. And the money's just down because it's coming over here. Quite frankly, they're they're. Oh really? Yeah. YouTube? Uh, you, well, YouTube's the most watched thing in in the country now because people uh, YouTube has integrated itself into living rooms and on on home theaters and stuff, which is a huge boon for YouTube. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, other video services can do that too once they get the technology, like Rumble. But, um, and, uh, it, and yes, people are mostly used to ads. I know a lot, if you use the ad blocker, I'm fine with that. Um, but people are used to ads here. So it's it's a better place to advertise because it's been established. Now you have Disney Plus and, and Netflix bringing on their ad tiers, and maybe some people are using them, uh, but I don't think they're that big of a deal for them. YouTube is still, and Google are still making fuck tons of money off of advertising. Mm -hmm. And then live sports, of course. Live, anything live, live sports. That's where, that's where the advertisers are pushing their money now. Uh, Dave Chandler for $50. $50. Explaining my Hell Divers 2 comment, for years, uh, the woke have been screaming about diversity, inclusion, equity, and democracy. The popularity <laughs> and meme memification, I can read, sorry, of uh, Hell Divers 2 is a fantastic way to mock them. It's already entertaining the lexicon. It seems to be. It looks like a fun game. A lot of people are enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Seems a little based. I mean, based in simply they're not going to bend the knee to, you know, like putting trans flags in it and stuff like that. It's great. Blackguard Forest gifted five neurotic memberships for $25. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Sound like Bree right there. And Smooth the DJ, mm -hmm. Smoo, has gifted 20 neurotic memberships for $100. <laughs> Woo! Smoo, baby. Uh, Luis Wu for five British pounds. Uh, proper money. Hey, Gary, you, Chris Drinker Baller, as and the crew at GNG, keep me sane in a crazy world. Thanks for everything you do. Keep doing it. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to point out again that while I great, I'm very grateful for that, and uh, I hope yeah, you, you'll be okay. And the world is a bit insane, but if uh, if we're the sane voice, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> So uh, thank you for being the same voices out there. You guys are the same voices. Uh, Lord J for $10. Gary's been getting around a bit recently. I feel like a streaming <laughs> streaming horror, but uh, you dirty girl. Congrats on a million and hail Gore. Hail Frank Gore. Um, thank you. Thank you. Frank Gore will be in Vegas. I can't, I can't wait, wait to my hotel. Frank Gore again. I booked my hotel. I'm all... Good to go. We got to talk about after the stream. We got to talk about like what we're doing with the nooner or what we're doing. Yes. When we're in Vegas. I, yeah. So we'll, we'll get there. Well, that's what I thought our last meeting was going to do too, but we didn't. So we'll just do it after the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, we forgot. yeah. When I got yeah. off the call, I was like, I didn't get my answer. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck? But uh, real. Yeah. So um, I was on. If you ever heard of a channel called After School, they've done some videos with uh, Baggage Claim, with Graham Hancock, with Randall Carlson. They're oh, fully, I haven't heard of. So them. what they do, what what he does is he's he's an actual animator, creative, and um, he'll take uh, like Baggage Claim will write and voice something, and then he'll have a whiteboard, and then he'll animate it while they're oh, talking and animate the story, and it's fucking cool looking. That's so. Cool. Uh, I was on with him. It's on before school doing a podcast. And then I did unsubscribed Then I did Piers Morgan. Then I did Nick Friedis wow. who just put it out, I guess last night. So I'll share that in the community section. In unsubscribed a bit. was great. Cheers. Unsubscribed Thank you. was really good. Cause you really did like deep. It, it, it that was a good appearance, Gary. I watched the whole thing. It was, it was fun being 
live with people at a table. Right. Yeah, that was the vibe nice. is so different. I love yeah. in person podcasts. And uh, hey, they're they're local, so that's that's always good. Um, and then uh, back on peers again. It's been a little nuts. Going to take a week off, uh, not because my social battery is spent, uh, but I have I there's like uh, projects I need to finish. Like just oh. around the house, <laughs> like not like oh, for neurotic. Really? Like just I need to do some shit around the house. <laughs> you got to be a dad. <laughs> yes. God, I, I know because it sucks. It, it's it doesn't suck. It's great, but like my wife, like Melissa's out there. She does like most of the yard work. Like ninety nine percent of the yard work. I got well the the boys you come over like, and the boys come over and do some of it too. But you know, we got like ten million newcomers. That could do your yard. I know. Too. I could just go to the Home Depot, right? But uh, <laughs> careful, they might like squash I, I, somewhere. <laughs> I think there's something uh, she likes to do it. That's why she does. It. <laughs> uh, griefed ish for five British pounds. Proper money. Chris Gore rocking the Tintin meets something about Mary Hair Gel. <laughs> no, no, it's Jimmy Neutron. Um, it's Jimmy Neutron. I love also, Jimmy Neutron. Has he been taking I, I, style tips from yeah, Ryan Kittle? Has, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, my I see character, it. Character. I see it. Has he been taking see? style tips from Jim from Ryan Kennel? Yes. Oh my God. Mamon, abuser of Streamlabs for ten dollars, <laughs> says hi, Chris. You give a soft recommend for the Roadhouse remake. I hated it. It's because of you. Totally it didn't. Fair. Uh, didn't give you an actual full recommendation, and I love you, no homo. But I'm not telling you to go fuck yourself. I'm merely hinting it. Burn this movie. Yeah, he hated it. He hated it. Drinker didn't like it either. Look, here's the thing. It's freaking Roadhouse. This isn't Lord of the Rings, all right? What's your standard? It's not Star Wars. There's no uh, Roadhouse lore that needs to be preserved or some story that's precious. It's a cheesy movie from the 80s that ends in a... There's a fight where someone's heart gets ripped out. It's stupid by the third act. It is the same. It is the stupid third... My biggest complaint about the new Roadhouse is no nudity. The original Roadhouse had hot women that got naked. Where is that? Uh, you know, so that's my big complaint. And it was like a soft recommend of like, hey, I already have Amazon Prime. I'll watch something on it. That was dumb. I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he did a good job. And Conor McGregor is just an idiot. Like he has, he has one acting emotion and face. It's the him smiling, which I thought was almost like a cartoon. Dude. Like what yeah. did you expect it was going to be? It's not. It's not a the, good movie. <laughs> it's, it's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. It's just not. No. But, but uh, Conor McGregor's bad acting was funny. I was literally it was laughing. It was so fucking bad. It I'm was, like, oh my God, it's hilarious. It, and I like UFC. I like, you know, I go to whenever there's a UFC fight, I'll go to my uh, the 35er, um, watch the. I love that stuff. And like it was, it was just fun, just like but, the original. It was stupid and over the top at the end. It's just like, what's your barometer? Like, you know, what is the barometer? What is your expectation for? I think first of all, never needed to be rebooted. It's just a brand people. Yeah, know yeah. From the 89 I movie. think that's what the the problem people are. I think they're just fucking done with this shit. And, and that that we can't blame remake them for. In general, that, just like, remake in just general. Done with it. It's like, why'd you call it Roadhouse? Just fucking call it something else then at this point. And 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 yeah, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like I said, yeah, I fucking yeah. next of kin. Fucking love that movie. I don't need a modern remake of Next of Kin. Another Patrick Swayze movie with I fucking love that movie, by the way. But they're just um, remaking so much stuff that was like it wasn't look, it wasn't great to begin with. Right, like a lot of these things, like were Bird not on a Wire. Like, let's remake Bird on a fucking wire. Do you even remember that, Mel oh Gibson? My... Oh God, barely remember that. <laughs> I saw it back in the day, but Goldie Hawn, I mean, like... Goldie Hawn, and Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> look, I believe that there's different barometers and different. You got to look at a movie for what it's trying to be, and you got to temper your expectations. I don't go into like a what? trauma movie. A, a, no, a toxic no, but, Avenger movie. But remember, you know what I mean, like Doug Lyman was out there fucking arguing that this should have gone to theaters, and fucking I got a side with Amazon on this one. <laughs> no, <laughs> first of all, I would have loved seeing it in the theater because it would have been so stupid. We would have been laughing our asses off. But I understand so the I decision of like the they probably would have lost a lot of money putting it in the theaters. 
Well, there's a huge cost to it, but he made that deal. He either could have gotten a higher budget to go to streaming only or a lower budget. I think it was 60 million going to theaters, 85 million. And they fucked him over. That, and I think that's no, what they, they did. Fuck them over. Oh, they, that was the deal. He oh, showed. okay. Okay. Oh, he made it he sound like they fucked him over and they promised him the theaters. Okay. There you go. His, his hope was that they'd see the bigger budget version he made and that they would like it enough that they would oh. put it in theaters. But he got his expectation. Yeah, you signed a deal, and your hope was a studio was going to do the right thing. <laughs> yeah, you sweet summer child, uh, Michael Storm for ten uh, Martian pesos after losing my business. Oh no, uh, being jobless for two years, selling my entire co oh. what? Selling my entire oh. comic book collection to make rent and bills. I can finally super chat again. I don't. Uh, oh. Since a month ago, I started a new job. Well, congratulations on your new job. Yeah. Been there. Been there, brother. Uh, and uh, can't wait to see you climb back. It'll be all good. Hopefully you get your own business again someday. But you got to pay them bills. You got to work. Ah, thank you for the super chat. I, thank you. Uh, Maman, abuser of Streamlabs for $10, says, Hi, Gary. Uh, when my dad comes over... He used to ask, are there any critical drinker videos you want to show me? Now he asks, are there any nerdrotic videos you want to show <laughs> me? You've supplanted him. No, thank you, but no. <laughs> oh no. No. Uh, I watch critical drinker. <laughs> it's like, I mean, um, I, I, drinker is the big dog. Drinker has uh, almost 2 million subs. I think he passed it because uh, he's a good guy. He's very talented and nobody on earth can do what he does, which is within seven to 10 minutes, hit all the points while not just bullet pointing it, explaining it thoroughly in the shortest amount of time. Nobody can fucking do that like the drinker. He's a master. But thank you for the con. Tell dad thank you. And thank you. But uh, drinker's awesome. Uh, Retro Meister for $50. <laughs> Hail Gary and panel. Today we got some very disturbing news that Steven Crowder's ex-wife was involved in a smear campaign against Steven. The whole thing is the prime example of what character assassination and therefore I stand with Steven and louder with, with Crowder. And thank you for the 50. It's your prerogative. Uh, I, I, I heard that too. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, it is. He said, she said. Uh, and I was discussing it with my wife because we watched the Tim Pool video too, and and Tim said, and this could be true, this is just two good people who don't like each other who are going at each other, or it could be two pieces of shit going at each other. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Uh, and honestly, with, the, with their divorce, none of my fucking business. Uh, are there scandalous women? Yes. Are there piece of shit dudes? Yes. That's all I got to say. It's it's interpersonal. It's family. My hope, I'm gonna say, uh, I hope the kids are fine. That's all I want. Yeah. I hope the kids are fine. Uh, yeah. This is the part I, I just I fucking can't stand. I mean, it's part of it. I understand it. I get it. It's not going anywhere. I can't do anything about it. Just not my favorite part of uh, being on the internet. That's all. Rusty Shackelford for $10. Watched Damsel with my wife. In return, I got her to sit through Outlaw Josie Wales and Legends of the Fall. Great palate cleansers for modern shite. Hail! Uh, Outlaw Josie Wales is the fucking goat, dude. That is a great fucking movie. I'll watch that tonight. Buzzards gotta eat. Endeavor to persevere. Endeavor to persevere. Uh, Richard Wit mm. Wit Talk Wit Cole Wit Cole Wit Cole on the Streamlabs side for ten dollars. Congrats on one million subs. Thank you very much. Pushing uh, my book, a book of deplorable jokes called "Nothing Safe" by Hugh 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 Buckus Hugh Buckus. What do you uh, both think of Frankenhooker and Hell Comes to Frogtown? If you what? haven't watched them, treat yourself and then. Uh, you could uh, add them to the list. Add them to the list, X-ray lady. Frankenhooker. Uh, I have not seen uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown. Have you? 
I haven't seen that. Frankenhooker, though, is one of my favorites. Yeah, I've seen Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker is weird. That's basically what weird. the movie Poor Things is, if you ask me. Ah. Yeah. Makes more sense. 90s film. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Frankenhooker. Love that. Gary without the gay etard <laughs> for $9.99. Hey, G, there's a scene in the new Wonka movie that you need to watch. It's when Wonka and another character are milking a giraffe. It's the part where she holds up a necklace. Oh, excuse me. All right, is it pearl? <laughs> is it a pearl necklace? <laughs> the diddler for two dollars. Hi, exodus goo. Ops got to run. Said so I think he went. Oops, got to run. Mm. Says ops though. <laughs> Enochmon abuser of Streamlabs for five dollars. Pale and male is stale. Tell that to the busty Asian chicks. They love you. Right, X-Ray Girl? I mean, Mark is not pale. <laughs> but he is male. <laughs> he ain't stale, though. He ain't stale. <laughs> Puzuzu for 10 British pounds. Well done, Gary, on getting a million subscribers. Thank you. Thank you. With the major studios now being so deep in debt and spending so much on movie budgets, can you see any major studio ever applying for Chapter 11? Uh, not a major news. No, they would get uh, broken up, bought out, merge. So when when a corporation tops out, just through my experience, just by watching this stuff, uh, I've I've worked on low levels. But when a corporation tops out, when it when something has reached maturity, what it does to to it it, it diversifies. It buys other things to keep going, like you know AT and T. Is still around, you know. Com uh, Comcast is still around because they buy other things to stay alive. But that at that point, it's like fuck. I, I I wouldn't invest my money in that company because now it's it's not doing the thing that made it money, that made it that made it popular, that made it this big thing. It can't do it anymore because either you know people are cutting the cord, uh, phone lines don't exist essentially now. So now they need to exist in other areas that, which are. And then you just become corporation with widget. I just, that doesn't scream innovation to me. You know, if I, it, it, you know, the, the one stock I have, and it's because I don't know where it is. <laughs> I fucking, I stopped getting mail for it, but I know it's out there somewhere is Tesla. Cause I got a bunch of shares cause I work there, but that would be a company I invest in uh, SpaceX, maybe something that's innovating something. If I did, which I don't, because uh, I'm not a financial analyst, and I invest in uh, key comic books, basically, and property. Uh, not going to rent any of it anytime soon, though. <laughs> That's for sure. Lace is out, Dan, for four ninety nine. Chris needs to contact Hunter to sell his art. <laughs> Hunter. Hunter Biden. <laughs> oh, Hunter Biden. Oh my God. I, I I'm convinced that in the world of high art, that's all just money laundering. It's all it is. That's all it it's, is. It's money laundering. I saw a documentary that they don't actually come right out and say it's money laundering, but it's like all these guys basically moving. Art, it's all first of all in storage and under security. They move it from basically one vault to a different vault from an owner. But this whole, hey, I'm going to give you $10 million for this piece of art. Once you're reaching like that level, it's it's about something else. It's about something else. Absolutely. 100%. Well, well yeah, uh, Hunter Biden being an artist should exploit that. But modern art, that's what it is. Modern art yeah. is laundering. And it's also a way for really fucking rich people to brag about understanding something that they don't really understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's just about... So bragging okay i know jackson pollock is considered this great artist i think he was just a psychotic alcoholic spraying <laughs> fucking paint on a fucking canvas uh, and right. it had no fucking meaning whatsoever that just people found the meaning in the splatty paint uh bad gamer gate for 10 canadian pesos i presume that as profound nerds, you know of Jerry and Sylvia Anderson Thunderbirds. But have you ever watched the Sylvia series called uh, Star Maidens? No. Colored hair triggers mechanisms to be sure. I have not. 
I Thunderbirds mm. were not something I watched a lot. I mean, I, they were there. Right. But it was kind of gone by the time cuz that Thunderbirds was like early 60s, 70s or mid 60s, 70s and yeah, it just wasn't on repeat a lot or it captured my imagination as a kid. It was there. I remember it, but I, I liked it just because it was so weird and we wouldn't have Team America without Jerry Anderson. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. So but I can't say I watched a ton of it. Uh the Diddler for two dollars. X-ray girl, come fly with me. Oops, gotta run again. <laughs> come fly <laughs> with me. Uh, Christian Bax for ten dollars. Can you explain the feud between JJ and A uh, AK? Um, I can't because I don't know the whole details. I was told by someone that they uh, don't like each other anymore, and I just I, I, my guess would be egos. But mm. I didn't get any details. I just got the they do not communicate. They do not like each other anymore, and maybe they never oh. really did. It was just a business relationship. But uh, the only thing I've ever heard uh, that is an Alex Kurtzman quote, I'm going to paraphrase it, is I'm not like J.J. I don't need all the attention. Hmm. Interesting. I would disagree with that statement completely, but that's, yeah, that's something you can affix to Kurt Kurtzman. They don't like each other. Uh, I think... Here be my guess. JJ abandoned Star Trek. Kurtzman took it over. Now JJ's coming back, and Kurtzman sees it as his fucking turf. I don't fucking know. They're both of them together couldn't make fucking good Star Trek. X Ray Girl could make better Star Trek than fucking Kurtzman and Jar Jar. I'd do the research. There you go. <laughs> uh, F O Cornali for ten dollars says Chris. Will you be checking out the movie I Saw the TV Glow? Yeah, I saw the trailer for that. It looks weird. It's another kind of A24 neon, kind of one of these small indie things. I saw the trailer. It looks weird. I don't know what the story is, but I like weird stuff. So those are the kind of little indie movies I tend to. I mean, I saw Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Part 2. I'm, of course, I'm going to see that movie. Uh, yeah. So Chris, but, but Chris recommend Late Night with the Devil. Recommend you you see one. a movie almost every day, right? Almost every day. Yep. Like sometimes too, I'll just go, oh, I'll just go see this. It's that A-list thing. And then also I get invited to stuff. I'm fortunate to still get invited to things. I've got, I've got tickets to see Pink Flamingos with John Waters at the Academy next month. Super excited for that. So yeah. I'm almost, almost every night. Yeah. So, yeah. See, when I started this channel was really for like obscure prestige television that's kind of what i i didn't want to like i wasn't going to do network shows we weren't going to review network shows uh it was it was the whole concept was hey let's do talking dead but not with what like, fucking walking dead let's do all the other <laughs> weird genre stuff we covered like ash versus evil dead and american god season one and counterpart and it was a lot of fun that's the kind of shit i like you know uh, Umbrella Academy season one, Alter hey. Carbon season one, Westworld season one. I was fucking loving all that shit. I was like, man, this is just not what I want to do. And then it all just went to shit. But I still think the future is in prestige series if they learn how to fuck. Like, if you're going to treat them like a movie, okay, do it every two years, but then still release them weekly. I would. Because I, st I still think you get more storytelling. I'm, I'm a you know comic book fan. I like serialized storytelling. So I kind of... Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put a gun to my head, I prefer television over movies. I do. Okay. Right. I, I, you know, I just do because I, I like character driven stuff and I like, uh, but, but, you know, there's some movies that are just absolutely great that are not better that, that, that are better than any television I've watched, including Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings, big, long fucking story. The Lord of the, the trilogy. That's, that's a lot of story right there. And that's what I like. That's what I like. I like being engrossed. But I also do like a good raunchy fucking sitcom that's about 90 minutes long. That's my jam too. Yeah. Yeah. Like like a roadhouse. I'm joking. I know. Not, I know. I, why are. did I bring that up? Dude. Yeah. I'm talking I'm, about bringing I'm, dodgeball back. It's like, don't. I mean, look, what were your expectations for that movie? None. That's, I had zero. I, I had zero. No, it and was it me and the wife. Your expectation. It was like 
well, we just finished all the new shows, and we literally yeah. had nothing else to watch. So we put it on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was not like top. And I was just like, oh, I'll just check it out. But I've always liked Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor. I mean, he was going to be Batman at one point, you know, back back in the day. He was one of the people that was um, in contention, so sort of in the mix of names. So I've always liked him as an actor. Uh, Zergos for 10 Australian dollars. I have also seen rumors of Battlestar Galactica and Babylon 5 reboots. <sighs> yeah, well, there is. Uh, Sam <laughs> Sam Esmail, who did uh, Mr. Robot, is still working on, I think Nerd Cookies is the last person I saw do a video on it. I don't know if it's still hmm. going on, but it's Sam Esmail, fucking massive TDS. The guy got, like, such a bad, because conceptually, Mr. Robot started out great, and I didn't like the ending. Uh, but concept like if they because it didn't go super sci fi, and I was kind of hoping it would go super sci fi, and right. uh, that would have been way more interesting. But, um, conceptually, pretty good in the beginning. Um, uh, but Sam Esmail like has fucking raging TDS, so fucking Battlestar will be you know, fucking about fascism, about, about Hollywood's version of fascism, which they don't right. realize that they're the fucking fascists. But uh, yeah, and Babylon Five reboot. Um, I, again, Babylon Five is more its characters than its concept. So you go in that re you go in and reboot it. You, you're trying to recapture great performances from from the original show, which I don't think you can do. Most of the actors are dead. Uh, just seems they can't think of anything new and would rather make. Bad versions of things that were popular at one point. Bingo. And it's because it's risk averse. And this is what my worry was from day one. It's like, I like genre. Chris likes genre. We all like genre. Fantasy, swords and uh, swords and sorcery, uh, high concept sci-fi. But it's expensive. And now the studios, the only way they're willing to risk it is if it has a some name recognition. And I said it yesterday. The only thing different is as soon as they get that that property that fans made popular, they decide to piss off fucking half the fans or more. Like immediately out the door. They decide to just like, oh, fuck you. Like Rings of Power was the minute they it was DOA was always going to be dead on yeah. arrival. Just always. Yeah. Because they didn't have the right people. They didn't have the right uh, attitude towards the fandom. They didn't have the right attitude towards the source material. They were never going to succeed. And, and now they're just like trying to push through their failure and make it look like not as much of a failure. But if they would have talked to any fucking Tolkien fan with a set of fucking nuts, even metaphorical nuts if you're a female, they would have gone, well... I wouldn't take this approach. I wouldn't get two inexperienced bad reboot rejects. Uh, I would get somebody who knows fucking Tolkien. And not only knows it, respects it enough, and not some lick spittle who will just bow to every fucking producer note, which is what they have now. Yeah, that uh, Rings of Power series is so forgettable. Oh, my God. I mean, and like... And don't listen to fucking Simon Tolkien. This guy's a fucking God, moron. So fun Remember when like Alan and I would review it and just go, what do what happened that even mattered? It just felt like yes. so lifeless. It just felt I I I would just suffer watching through it. I mean, even just, even movies that are considered bad from the past that we like fifth element. Nobody's gonna say that movie's bad now. Nobody. Right. P people fucking love it. Didn't do well when it came out. At the time, I was mixed on it. I'm like, I like the effects. Like, I like Bruce Willis. I walked out of that going, of that was fucking one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Oh, really? I <laughs> yes. didn't feel that way initially. I didn't feel that way. I, I walked out of it going, that's what I want out of my sci-fi. I want a fullness and a life. Because I was so thick because of budget constraints. I was so fucking right. sick of post-apocalyptic. They're in a desert on a desert planet. Everything's dire. It's one single fucking right. alien. It's a, it's the same fucking story and over again. And this one went a little Blade Runner, except fun. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they borrowed a lot from heavy metal and the ink call. And I'm fine with that. I thought it was great. And it was fun. It was fun. Look, it, I grew to like it. I just, there are things about it that bother me, but whatever. I fucking love it. And there are things that are great. It is a French comic brought to life. 
Yes, yes, definitely French. And what's uh, what's her name? Lilou or whatever. Morty Pass. Yeah, everybody yeah, liked Lilou. If anything, just for women to cosplay as that character at conventions. Oh, I see. That's good. <laughs> that's I've seen a lot of Lilou cosplay in my time. And Go if you do, and Con if you Atlanta, can, you'll see it. You'll, Dragon Con is amazing. Uh, oh, what if Bob Ch uh, Iger put Chapik in place after signing off on all those bad projects because he thought Chapik would cancel them for him and be the bad guy, but didn't? LOL. Early berm for ten dollars. No, I think Bob Iger left because COVID was coming. Right. And uh, he might have anticipated that this is probably a really good time to release our streaming service. And uh, I'm just saying, what a coincidence that everybody was locked down and everybody, I mean, some people fast-tracked them, but everybody had their streaming services ready for that very year. Really weird. I'm just saying it's a coincidence. But they thought it would take off. Every studio thought that they would be Netflix. They, they And Disney, dude, do you have any idea how much Disney put into Disney Plus that they just basically abandoned. Okay, so I had a uh, one of my friends, we we don't talk anymore, but one of my friends used to work for Netflix and Disney poached Netflix people to build Disney Plus, right? Mm -hmm. When I started this channel, he was working on Disney Plus. <laughs> he was working. Yeah, a friend of mine, That's 2014. Friend of mine That's 2014, Chris. A friend of mine who worked in the marketing department at Disney also worked on Disney Plus. They spent so much time on the UI and just like it was just it it, it was this project. They just kept kicking the can. It was crazy. Well, you I know why they were having problems with the chat. yeah, I saw that. You know why they were having problems with the UI, right? Why? No, I actually don't. Patents. Oh they would come up with a menu and go, that's too close as Netflix. Netflix could sue us. Ugh. That that was a big but uh, yeah, they were spending. They, they spent tons of billions and billions and billions of dollars on it. I think it's. Uh, I think it was. It was like five. No, I think it's more than five billion. Billions on this, and all of a sudden they had it ready, had it ready to go during COVID, and they thought it would take off. Everybody thought they would be Netflix, and it didn't. So what do we got here? Oh. Me, uh, I was a core member, so it's got to be a meme. Yeah. Just to, just a meme, just to entertain oh, the audience. Uh, I can share. In the private chat, X-ray girl. Sorry, I didn't. Oh it's my god! god. <laughs> it's, it's just to make you all laugh. <laughs> 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 I love oh it. my god! Thanks, Legion memers. Love you guys. Cordova. Like that, retweet. Oh my god! Oh man! Very good. <laughs> Core members, awesome. That is so good. <laughs> oh, <man>. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Louis Wu for five British pounds. Gary, now that you're at one million subs and Chris got over one hundred thousand. Hey, did you get? Did you apply for your plaque? By the way, oh, I got my plaque. Oh, you got, got it already. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Thank right. In the, you can barely see it in the corner. Like I see right. it. I see it. Yeah. I see yeah. it. Oh yes, it's right and above. I got one for Alan. Dude, it's above. Oh, did you get one for? Oh, did you make one? I got one for Alan. Yeah, and and Aww. members of my team, they earned it. So I'm I'm really proud of it. So. Yeah, it's cool. I don't, I don't, I don't know that film threat is general is, in and uh, has enough interest to get to a million. I think that I'm being realistic. You know, uh, how long not, has your YouTube channel been around? We've only really been aggressive for like two years. Okay, yeah, uh, it, it, it could. It's been around for a really long time, like. But I mean, you've like, only been aggressive at it for two years, and you got to it. Two years that. going, yeah. like let's just do live streams every week, so. I think you'll yeah. eventually evolve into getting uh, videos, just having clips taken out that are edited by an editor, and it would absolutely, it could. It could. <laughs> We're talking about doing that later this year, but then we've got, like, you know, the third show we started. But I also, How many lives I also had that concept for you that we yes. talked about that you should fucking do, and it would get you to a million. Yes, I forgot what that was. Uh, we have to talk all offline because I've got I got a bunch of stuff to talk to you about. God, you're not the only friend of mine who does this, by the way. It makes me want to bang my head against the fucking wall. That's okay, man. You guys never listen to me. You just never do. I, I love you, to though. You. I do listen to you. <laughs> don't you feel like a dad, Gary? <laughs> I do. It's like I don't. I'm not like one to give the unsolicited advice like a lot at all. 
But occasionally I'm like, hey, I'll just fucking say it right now, Chris. You know yeah, that yeah, fil- you know that film courage thing? They got, yeah, a, got lot of fucking, got the a lot of fucking views off of that. I'd say do the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yes. We were, we're talking about doing that. My yeah. producer, Glenn Brown, uh, he he he's in Florida. He's wildly talented. We work on like projects that are outside of even the channel. Um, he did some stuff on Attack of the Dock, among other things. He's been great. So we're just talking about all these. Other, yeah, I, we're going to do that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Film Courage, they're, they're, all their top videos are just me. It's all like yes. 4 million views, 2 so million just views. Do it but why channel. did they get the, like, I've done video. Like, how is it then that they get, it's only me that blows up on their channel. I don't understand it. Well, and then the last time I did three rounds of interviews with them. And then they asked me, like, do you want to do a fourth round? I'm like, why don't we make it a collab? Right? Like, because you could just estimate how much they made. I just want to do a collab. Just fair and whatever. You, I think that's you fair know, to ask. It's fair to ask. You know, I just asked. I, and then they never no, got back. And then you can just do it on your own. You can uh, just. I'm sure there's no shortage of, shortage of women who will ask you questions. <laughs> you know, yeah. like all you need to do is do that. Yeah. I I, I was right. Get, get Danica. Get Danica to ask you uh, questions. Danica. I love Danica. She's yeah. awesome. Um, no, just like I, but I, by the end we were doing it, I was like, Hey, could you just add, and I'd send them like eight, five, six, eight questions. Like, just ask me this because I already knew what I was going to say. Yeah. Just me up and then I'll, I'll go. Dude. So, it's, all, it's, right, all right. It's a winning formula started immediately. Yes. <laughs> started immediately. I will uh, do it. I did the, this, this spaces I did, I was on freaking fire on the spaces that's on my feed it's archived with Catherine Brodsky who just came out with a book she's like a free speech she got canceled and then came back and I like her good for um, her good for don't her don't always agree back. but whatever it's, yeah yeah okay. uh Louis Louis by the way Gary Nights you're at one million Chris got over one hundred thousand let's get Rob's channel the Burnett work over one hundred thousand yes I'm shilling for Rob yes. hail to the fellowship yes. yeah. where's he at where's Rob at I don't know I gotta talk to Rob because he reminds me of a couple other people I know that are like, they're stalled at like a number. And I'm like, stop doing stuff that's like, I'm going to do this direction and this direction and this. And this yeah. is like, you got to okay. be focused. You got to be focused. You got to be focused. I mean, that's the one thing like, you know, Jeremy understands that, you know, if it's going to be a- away from geeks and gamers, he starts another channel. Like, and that's yeah. kind of what you got to do. You got, you got to focus on, you got to be super autistic about it subject on your fucking channel that's the way it is yes. and, and and there's and it gives you leeway to be within that framework right right but you don't want to be you know i'm not going to start cooking channels or uh you know or or doing action figure stuff here that's that's for another channel you know that's more for the live channel i did the same thing and when we did that we not split that I, I don't cook by the way i don't fucking yeah cook. well i like to grill uh, grill, I can grill. Does that count? Yeah. Barbecuing, I can barbecue. Oh, I grill is like barbecue. Grill is such a man thing. It's, it's such like a man like, cooking. Yeah, fire and there's smoke. Yeah, and the smell of death. Oh, and dude, dude, love in, it. in your part of town in Southern California, yeah. you can go to any carniceria, get yourself some pollo asada or some carne asada that's pre-marinated by some yes. Mexican grandmother. And it'll be the best fucking thing you've ever had. You just throw that straight on the grill. You just go. Yeah. Or just so on a good. skewer with some veggies, whatever, and just, just cook it up. I'm but hungry. like, I even split off the Film Threat channel. We have two other channels. Yeah. The trailer. That's I a great noticed. idea. So yeah. did you notice your subs going up a little more? Yes. Because of it? there you so go. We put movie trailers on. We have a Film Threat trailers channel and a Film Threat interviews. All of our interviews are on a separate channel. Yeah. So we just. Did it that way and then the main channel is reviews reviews and live streams that's it yeah i mean that's just talk do. about hollywood that's the, that's your thing and then yep. you can push you know yep. have your discussions about independent film i think it's great i just think if you add those videos it, it'll be a, a boon for your channel i'll do it i I'll would it. i would not just do it i would make it your highest priority okay all right see I'm gonna do it now. i love you man Wait. i want to see you succeed. i appreciate it i appreciate it gary's such a good cheerleader I'm, 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 yeah, where are my pom poms? They're around <laughs> here somewhere. No, I, I just think that would kill on your channel. Fucking, all right, I'll, I'll do it. Just because there's so many things that to me are so obvious. 
when I talk to people in the industry, I'm like, why don't people just say the, some of the, some of the most educated people I know are some of the dumbest people I know because they talk around stuff or they're diplomats or political. They talk like freaking Bob Iger, who's a moron. I mean, right. I mean, like total moron. You point out the weatherman who was smart at buying IP, but can't run a company. Well, he's he's right? a deal maker. Okay. That's great. Being a deal yeah. maker is great. If you own a fucking uh, car dealership or a car company or yes. an advertising company, when you have own a creative company, you have to be way more than a fucking dealer. You have to be a tastemaker and yes. a deal maker. And, and you have to understand yeah. cinema and film. And he doesn't. When you no. look at like some of the studio heads and executives of the past, they knew they knew they gave notes on exorcist or those early films. And the, 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 even like uh, uh, lots, a lot of films in the seventies got, studio notes but they were from people who knew movies yeah and they weren't all, all and you, you could hear i hear these stories like those guys back in the day they knew film they understood it they and they got it there's no one you can't point to an executive today that like that executive is really smart the only person i can point to is maybe ted sarandos because he understands like hey we're gonna do some of this stuff is gonna be we're gonna placate certain audiences and but he's based the guy is super based he just is so um I know I, I, I used to used to buy film threat DVDs for me in the early 2000s. He was the only the only company that paid me within 30 days net. You know what that's like, Gary, when you got those invoices, oh, and yeah. receivables, all that stuff. They paid within 30 days and they bought 700 copies of every movie that we I put had, out on DVD. In the I early had to 2000s. do that with shops and auto parts. And at the end of every fucking month, I had my list. Yeah, I had my list. Yeah. I had to fucking. Uh, yeah. I had to call, and it's the same fucking ten shops. It's like, dude, you got to give us something. You got to give us a thousand bucks. You got to do yeah. something, bro. You gotta pay I understand this times are tough, but, uh, know, but yeah, whatever. net thirty, net thirty. Um, cool kid Connor on the Streamlabs side for five dollars. Chris, the sequels only kill the OG trilogy if you make if you take them seriously. I don't. So they don't ruin the OG Star Wars for me. Same with Terminator One and Two. I don't take anything seriously after that. They're not even done on the same medium, 35 millimeter versus di digital. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the biggest difference between, I, it depends, you know what? It depends on you. Um, yeah. But the the Disney trilogy has ruined my, uh, my love for Star Wars because I let it, but also because Mark Hamill, Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, their treatment of fans, George yeah. Lucas just coming out. Like, uh, it. Th there's a lot of stuff where it's just like, I'm over it. Will I always enjoy the original trilogy? Absolutely. Without a doubt. To me, that's that's Star Wars. That will always be Star Wars, and that will only be Star Wars. I'm not a prequel fan. I don't hate them, but I'm not a fan. I don't think they add anything great uh, to the franchise. And quite frankly, uh, if we really think about it, it's what led to the di sale to Disney. So... It sucks. It all sucks. Oh, well. It'd be like if the Beatles stayed together. You know? The Beatles stayed together. They went corporate. It would have, they'd have sucked. <laughs> Their music would have been shit. Uh, like, in, in short order. Uh, Tommy, no figure for nine ninety nine. My dad met Pete Rose in an airport. He was signing autographs in an airport. Poor guy. And he was a complete douchebag. And was rude to my father. Screw whatever reputation he ruined. Fuck that guy. 199 and Trump 2024. Well, fuck him for being rude to your dad. There's no excuse for that. And yeah, uh, Pete's life has gotten is sad. Like he is a dick. And uh, I guess and has a lot of demons. But if he was rude to your dad, fuck him. Yeah. Uh, too ugly to assault for two dollars. Frank Gore looking good today. Well, thank you. I just got my hair cut. I'm sorry. To Olgi to assault. To <laughs> Olgi. Yeah, Ryan pointed that out, too. It's like, Olgi. It says U-L-G-Y. Uh, Adam West for 1999. My hearing, the, uh, me hearing the bad reboot is trying to make Star Trek 4 the face palm heard around the world. P.S. Loved seeing Gary on Unsubscribe. Best mashup of all time. Cheers. Thank you. That was fun. That was fun. What if, what if Star Trek 4 was a remake of Star Trek for the voyage home. Oh God. <laughs> except, 
except with a, a with a different ending and they actually figure out what what the whales are or whatever i don't know that would be weird but or make it like back to the future where the young versions have to go into star trek for the voyage home and they use the footage and shatner's in it as old shatner I, i'm coming up with stupid Dude. ideas because they're and so bad they might actually happen they you're right and remember yeah. what the original idea was was kurt was going to go back in time and be with his father chris hemsworth yeah that was that was the plot of star trek 4 fucking right. retarded uh yeah, nikolai good. volkov for five dollars says exodus ghoul set the record straight are all asians related and do the women folk really have sideways vajayjays Thanks, you're the best. I don't know about the second question. You know, that's a little weird one, but uh, all Asian women are me. There you go. <laughs> and we're all related to Genghis Khan. So there you go. Yes. Uh, early Berm Streamlabs for $10. Only recently saw Leslie, he uh, Leslie Headlund. Uh, instantly thought she was a trans, but only label she claims is gay. She's just horrifically ugly. <laughs> no wonder she couldn't get a man, poor thing. <laughs> she, she, yeah. But you know what? She knows how to yeah. bullshit dumb fucking executives into getting a job. I just don't, don't understand with her qualifications or this uh, Shaboy, Shaboy, whatever the other woman is. Chinobi. Charmaine Obey Chinoy. Yeah, yeah, it just rolls off the tongue. It does. Um, <laughs> like, like um, Vivek Ramaswamy. I could, Vivek Ramaswamy. That's the. I can't, other man. Guy that, I'm so glad I didn't try to say his last name when he was on. When he was on. No, I heard you. It was funny. I would have said but, Vivek uh, Salami. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. That would have been bad. But I just don't understand. What are the qualifications for these people that are doing Star Wars now? I don't think it's knowledge of Star Wars. That's no. for sure. Or even -E like I. it's identity. What? Yeah. That's the qualification. That's it. I mean, yeah, that, that, it's, um, that's why there's big problems in Hollywood right now. And bridges. And maybe. Oof, maybe. Ooh, bridges. Oh, or that was planes. Horrific. Yeah. And trains. And and like automobiles. This, yeah. <laughs> country <laughs> falling apart. Oh my god. We're building like, back better, everybody. It's oh my god! What an embarrassment! Yeah. Chris, tell Gary about late night with the devil. Says Scooty Doo. Scooty. Oh, I think we talked about it Doo earlier. It's just, it's just a solid indie horror movie, shot in Australia of all places. And then, um, it's like a Dick Cavett guys. It, it's a show that's like a lost and forgotten Halloween episode of his show where things go sideways, and that's it. And I don't want to tell you anymore. I, I like the trailer a lot. So uh, yeah. when when it it's to be on streaming in April, like it's only going to be yeah, in the yeah, theater yeah. for like theater a month. And I'm going to definitely check it out. Uh, I'm going to go see it in the theater again. So I black shirts it. for ten dollars. Hulu tab is in Disney Plus app, not Disney Plus and Hulu, and they changed the color of the app from blue to teal today. I would guess Hulu app goes away when they kill Hulu Live TV. No, they're not. I would guess. So you thinking they would just fold Hulu into Disney Plus? I would that would be a but how would you fold the UI? So you would just put Disney Plus on the Hulu UI. That's possible. That that saves face a little bit. But I don't think they're gonna get rid of Hulu Live. Hulu Live TV probably makes them a lot of money. I'll bet it's popular. Yeah. But yeah. I, I use the YouTube live, even though it's more expensive than most. Um, I actually like the YouTube live because I can watch it anywhere. I do too. I, 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 the only thing that's missing on YouTube live is history channel though. It's not on YouTube live. Uh, well, I watch my fucking UFO shows, man. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing. Yeah. So I have to, uh, what I do is I just, I go on Amazon prime and I buy the season. It's easier than fucking signing up for a, another live thing or another streaming service. It's just like 20 bucks. I get the season. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I like the YouTube live. It just, it's just ex more expensive. Uh, if they, if they, yeah, it, just, it is. But I, yeah, I use YouTube live. 
and you can have up to five accounts, which I like. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't work. Oh, that's for like that. the premium so subscription, right? You're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I went to like live TV for the first time forever just to look, see what was going on with the bridge collapse. Right. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. To uh, see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, James for ten dollars says remake the last Starfighter and vibes with Jeff Goldblum and Cindy Lauper as phys uh, as Psychic? phys as psychics. Psychic. LOL. Okay, yeah. Um, the last Starfighter. No, leave it all alone, please. Owen Benjamin exposed uh, Chowder five years ago, called out his crazy practices, backed not gay Jared, and QBG has called Owen a crazy guy living in a forest many times on FNT, so I know, uh, so I guess now it's safe. Um, I mean, Owen Benjamin being a crazy guy in the forest, I I mean, he lives in a forest. <laughs> he does. Really? I don't know enough to say anything. I know, like, anecdotal stuff. I know fucking nothing about that stuff. But, yeah, it's mm. it, it's all going out there. Uh, Quarter Black um, did not have to sign an NDA, I don't believe. Uh, you mm. definitely had to sign one with me, though. Here, I have it. I have it right here. Hang on. You have it. I have it. I have. Wait, I gotta write it real quick. <laughs> what, does it just say NDA on it? Uh, yeah. like this sign here. Oh my god! This was our agreement, right? <laughs> NDA. Where'd you get that? <laughs> it's from Eric. July's uh from Megacon. How many times did they oh have to use this? Mine is shut the fuck it, up. Uh, <laughs> no, I know I, how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No NDAs here, folks. No NDAs here. And maybe I'm stupid. Okay. I'll be stupid. I'll be stupid and trust my people. Trust the people. Yeah. They're not my people. He's only quarter my people. <laughs> <laughs> only quarter? You mean three quarters? Think about it. Just for a second. Uh-oh. I don't want to think about don't. it. Don't. Zatch fan, 202 for $9.99. <laughs> I agree. Frozen Empire lacked energy and could have been executed better. But it wasn't as a complete cringe fest like 2016. You know what? I have not seen... 2016 past 10 minutes. I watched 10 minutes of it and bowed out. I saw it in a theater one time. Uh, the opening weekend. And there were, I was one of probably 10 people in the whole theater. Oh shit. An opening night. Uh, which will never see the light of day again. No, I, Ghostbusters is done. I mean, it's like, at least Afterlife like had the right idea and it had reverence for the franchise, right? This one just felt like Sony notes. Yes. Here's all my notes. Which should I include? All of them. And then you get what you got. Too many yeah. storylines. Yeah. yeah. Too many notes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, we're going to get more stuff. They're going to remake yeah. Never Ending Story. They're going to announce Star Trek 4 nine more times in the next five years and never make it. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy will come out at Star Wars Celebration and announce four more movies we'll never see. That's just kind of where we're at, you know? That's where we're but, at. But at least Krull is safe. Uh, it is for now. And damn, I like that movie. That I like that movie. movie. I want a glaive. I want a glaive. Uh, and, they they and sell they make like custom ones at cons all the time. I, I Yeah, I've seen the prop But you want one. a real one, don't you? Yeah, I want a real one that's sharp. But it, that movie holds up. I mean, for what it is, it's sort of a mix of interesting, like fantasy, but like with sci-fi stuff. I really like. It's just such a weird tone. I, I love it. Yeah. And and uh, oh god, we didn't get to that article. Shit, I meant to. We'll do it next Wednesday, but I'll bre I'll say it briefly because we're going to be out. Is Judd Aptow came out and was basically bitching that Hollywood is in co competition with itself. He's like, he's, oh, well, uh, here, I'll. In what way? Like, also, I got to do a stream in six minutes. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> My own stream. So, in, here's, here, real quick, here's a headline from, from what he said. Uh, I screen capped it somewhere. Hang on. Uh, there it is. 
All right. Judd Aptow says Netflix licensing HBO shows is a scary thing. You'll get fewer new shows because it's cheaper. And more people watch them. So the old stuff is better. And now they're openly admitting that they, Hollywood is in competition with itself. And they're going to take less chances because Netflix can just fucking license other older shit. And more people yeah. will watch it. Like Suits. That should scare the fuck out of everybody in Hollywood that during the strike, some mid fucking USA show was the most watched thing all summer. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I, oh, by the way, while I'm on the stream, people message me things that may be helpful. Yeah. My friends, like no one's hiring in Hollywood right now. It's like a, it's um, a, sort of a quiet freeze. So yeah. Um, yeah. You talked I mean, about it. I watched your video yeah. on the, on the Hollywood depression. It was a great video by yeah. the way. Um, yeah, thanks. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's happening. All right. So we're going to end it there. Uh, Aptow does suck. He's another fucking idiot with TDS. But right. uh, and and I just love it when they come out and say, "Oh shit, we're in trouble." It's like you fuckers, you you made a bunch of shit and then you went on strike. I mean, I I don't know how to put it any simpler than that. You made a bunch of shit and then asked for more money. Yeah. And Hollywood went, "Well, do we want to pay for more shit or can we just license Batman the animated series?" Or fucking The Office. Or something people will like and watch. Well, let's fucking do that. You know? In the meantime, Taylor Sheridan, who wasn't down with the strikes at all, and whether you like his stuff or not, can pump out fucking six shows in a year. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. just like, you know, crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. So that's it. Uh, Chris, you got a stream coming up in five minutes, four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. I think I'm going to be a little bit late, So, but I will be there. And uh, thank you. Watch Hollywood on the Rocks. Watch Hollywood Alan on King. the Rocks. We can rate it, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm it. setting it up right now. Uh, okay, cool. X-Ray Girl, best Set producer in the me. business. Cool. Uh, She's also the yeah, best actor. I'm okay. Yeah, we got to talk real quick. <laughs> so what do you got coming up, X-Ray Girl? Uh, I'm going to be playing um, Dragon's Dogma, uh after I eat dinner and then 9 p.m. Eastern uh, poor choices with tugs. Awesome. That <laughs> sounds great. We got Gundam on FNT. Yes. And jackets. Flightgunchiggers.com. FNT jackets. FNT jackets. Yes. They're out there. So mm -hmm. go check them out. And we will see you next Wednesday, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Later. Bye.